The year is 1997, and under the heat of the July sun, the waves of the Atlantic Ocean lap against an oceanographic trawler, the Ocean Wrestler, currently several hundred miles east from the Bermuda Triangle and alone on the horizon. On the weather deck stand four searchers, the sea breeze filling their lungs as they pose for a photo. Behind them, a specially constructed, toughened submersible designed to operate under severe and abnormal conditions, ideal for their purposes. Standing proud in his boots is Greg Blower, the financial backing behind this historic adventure, the sweat congealing on his brow as he suffers the infernal heat. Behind Mr. Blower is Simon Creek, officially Mr. Blower's bodyguard, unofficially the good-for-nothing nephew. Then, the enigmatic Helen Milton with her alert scientific mind, educated in the top colleges in the country. Finally, Professor Caldwell, world-renowned archaeologist, considered to be a fruitcake on the hunt of a lost cause by many in the archaeological community, but in his heart and mind, he knows the many clues and legends he has followed will prove true in the end. The four enter and seal the only exit to the submersible. The tension in the air is thick, and as the professor checks the oxygen pressure levels, the winch is started up and the submersible is slowly lowered into the deep, murky Atlantic Ocean. The search for a mystery, hidden by the sands of time, has begun. This is the search for Atlantis. Atlantis, a myth known around the world as the city which was sunken by an angry god. Many have searched for it and failed. The lost city has hidden itself well from the prying eyes of the world. As the submersible descends fathom after fathom, Helen watches the instruments act quirkily. It started with a twitch here and there, then some unbelievable readings. Looking at his chronometer, the professor smiles to himself. A quick warning about an abnormal magnetic field puts Helen's mind at rest, but agitates Mr. Blower and confuses Simon. It happened so slowly they almost didn't notice. At first, it was just a little dim and warm. Then, as the sleek yellow submersible continued into the magnetic field, it got brighter and brighter and warmer and warmer. Then Simon noticed a fish, a big fish, a glowing fish. He pointed it out to the professor, who smiled and said it was a prophetic dolphin, reciting a passage written by Christopher Columbus, who spoke of mystic glowing creatures making ethereal noises and guiding them through dangerous waters. It took just a second for the professor to decide the path they should take, and as the dolphin began to swim further into the murkiness, the professor told Helen to use the dolphin as their guide. This drew more than a raised eyebrow from Mr. Blower, who was expecting a well-choreographed scientific mission. He wasn't expecting this. Guiding the submersible through the silence of the seabed, leading them right to the center of the magnetic field, Helen watched the radar as many other curious dolphins began to surround them. Helen smelt the burning electronics of the guidance console and knew they were going to crash. The submersible shook violently as it made contact. Everybody was thrown from their seats onto hard, unforgiving surfaces. In the dim light from outside, Mr. Blower searched for his cigar lighter, constantly muttering insults at the professor. A hull-ripping creak shuddered through the small craft as it finally came to rest. Simon found Mr. Blower in the darkness and helped him to his feet. Meanwhile, the professor was both thanking and praying to the gods. Helen piped up with a status report, her fingers trying the dead controls to no avail. Most of the electrics were gone, and the hull was taking on water. Then the professor suggested she should try the outside lights as they had their own power supply. There it was, the professor's holy grail and Mr. Blower's unique business opportunity, Atlantis. In London, several days later, and in the middle of a snowstorm, a newspaper editor waits.
Kendall, you look exhausted. Have all those football matches you've reported on finally got to you? Not really. It's actually a great job. I see. Well, you remember a couple of weeks back you said you really wanted to be a serious reporter. Well, now, here's your chance. I'm sending you to the Caribbean to find a missing professor. It's a top story, and I know you won't let me down. Well, huh. Did you say the Caribbean? Yes. It seems Professor Caldwell went there recently, but since then, nobody has heard a thing from him. You may remember that uh, he came into the office a few months back, claiming he was onto the biggest archaeological discovery of this century. Chief, I'm happy doing the sports reviews here in snowy England. The Caribbean sounds great, but this is a job for a more seasoned reporter. Isn't there somebody else you could send? Now, nah, Kendall, I think you're underestimating your talents. I've seen something in you which only the best reporters have. I think it's about time you went on a serious report. You're wasted on the sports section. This assignment will hone your skills. All expenses are paid, and your free use of the company's plane to get you wherever you need to go. You want me to fly in that rust bucket across the Atlantic? Forget it. It's not so bad. Here, take this rug. Have a quick drink before you take off, and you'll be out like a light. You'll find that you'll hold together once in the air. Are you sure you can't get anybody else to do this? I'd go myself, but I'm working on this ancient languages piece for the next issue. It's fun for an old connoisseur like me, but you wouldn't appreciate it. The Caribbean, hmm. I'm beginning to like the sound of sun-swept beaches and... Bye, Kendall. Go find me that professor. Bye, slave driver. Oh, I mean cheap. Way to the outside world. A quick taxi ride, and I'm at the airport. Excuse me, ma'am, but what are you painting? From here you can only see the fountain, some buildings, and a couple of palm trees. Don't call me ma'am. Call me Judith. Oh, Aunt Judith. World-renowned psychic painter. Okay, Aunt Judith. And what is it that you are painting right now? I'm painting your future. But this is not the time to ask questions. You're a good-looking young man. Don't you have a girlfriend? You're the psychic one. You tell me. It doesn't work that way. Why don't you do something for the old legs of Aunt Judith? Hmm, okay, sure. What do you want me to do? Go and fill up this little pot with clean water. You see, I can't wash my brushes with this dirty water. Okay, okay, I understand. Well, just give it to me, Aunt Judith, and I'll see that you get some clean water. Good, thank you. Have you seen a strange looking English guy around here? Well, he's a scientist and probably came here with a lot of equipment doing some research. If I'd have seen such a man, I wouldn't have missed a dinner opportunity. Damn, I've seen nobody like that. Okay, thanks anyway. It's a real antique. Who knows where he found it? Excuse me, friend. Is it possible to visit the museum? Certainly, if you pay for a ticket. Why did you leave your old wreck right here? Old wreck? This is a classic Mustang. You just can't find these cars anymore. So, how much is an entrance ticket? 
What a grim face the pirate Mancusin had. If this portrait is a good likeness, he really was scary. Look, Viva the South Wind. That must be his motto. The needle points east. The inscription says, Here the pirate Mancusin placed his compass as an everlasting memory of his first heroic boarding. A bit of a megalomaniac, this Mancusin. There's a motto carved on this shield, Viva the South Wind! Why is this piece of cloth hanging out of the wall? Very strange. It doesn't help to pull it. It's stuck in there tight. I can turn it a little, but nothing happened. I'll bet this thing made one heck of a bang. I don't understand how it could help. All ancient and decaying artifacts. Judging by the dust and its general condition, I'd say that it's a very ancient book. Hey, there's a letter tucked inside. Hey, there's a... Judging by the dust and its general condition, I'd say that it's a very ancient book. It's signed by the chief of the governor's guard. It seems to be a service report. Let's see what's in there. After three days of strict siege, my men managed to penetrate inside the fortress, forcing the barricaded doors. However, inside, there was no sign of Mancusan pirates. They vanished again using means which may resemble sorcery. Hmm, interesting. From here, it should be possible to see the entrance to the museum. Look, you can see the curator's rickety old car. What a relief! 
A little fountain. Without the knob, it's impossible to use. I heard that once there was a pirate called Mancusen sailing from here. Do you know anything about him? Oh, they're old tavern stories. You don't believe that stupid stuff, do you? But what about all the evidence in the castle museum? It's probably all fabricated as a tourist attraction. I don't believe in any of it. Hi, you getting some fresh air? What do you want, son? Well, I'm interested in the local sites. I'm a tourist. Well, I'm the man for you. I know everything about the island. Have you seen an English professor with his assistant around here? You're American, aren't you? Yes. These islands are becoming fashionable for you guys lately. Before, nobody came here, but now... What do you mean? Not too long ago, a strange guy came here, English for sure, and he was looking for something. He was asking a lot of questions. He was looking for trouble, and he found it. Such as? What trouble? What else do you know? I know that you ask too many questions for a tourist. Take a hike. I'm busy. Please, just tell me where he went. It's very important. Who knows? I don't need this hassle. Do you feel like telling me some of the tales about the pirate man Kusin? Tales? This is history. Once the pirates ruled these islands. Hmm, interesting. My brother and I are the last descendants of the ferocious man Kusin. Look, kid, I got the pirate's tattoo on my arm. There are only two of us in this world that still have it. Me and my brother, Tobias. Also called Black Sheep. Blast him. Well, you don't seem very friendly towards your own brother. The betrayer stole my life savings and ran away with my map to look for Mancusin's treasure. I saved every penny to go myself in search of the treasure when I retired. But you see, blast it. Oh, come on, don't think about it. If he finds the treasure, I'm sure he'll send you a check. Show me your tattoo. Cool, isn't it? Only members of the gang could have this tattoo done. A white dolphin with a secret motto. Viva the South Wind. What does it mean? If I tell you, it wouldn't be a secret motto anymore, now would it? That's true. I read a strange letter in the museum. It said that the pirates always managed to escape capture. How do you explain this? Their chief. The famous Mancusin was the most astute and cunning of all the pirates. Why the most astute? There are some very good stories about him and his voyages. The governor, trying to capture the pirates, turned yellow because of the jaundice he got from being angry. They used to call him Don Canary. <laughs> but how could Mancusin escape every time? This is still a mystery. They used to go inside the fortress, which is now used as the museum, and... Puff! They disappeared. Whoever tried to reveal their secret was always found, hanged, by the tongue. Yuck. He wasn't playing around, old man Cousin. Well, you asked me about the English professor. Here's what's left of him. Keep it. It's a souvenir of the dear, curious professor. He lost it while I was taking him and his assistant to the oceanographic ship off the coast of Bermuda. I wouldn't know what to do with it. Uh. 
A magnet. It seems to be very powerful. I wonder what I can use it for. Snappy little things, crabs. Oh no! It's got under there! The little monster. I'm no strong man. The rock stays where it is. This hammock is very tempting. It looks really comfortable. It's been very worn, and it's got a piece of cloth missing from the one sleep. It isn't good enough to wash the floors with. Forget it.
If I can make out this terrible handwriting, I think it reads, maybe Simon is a fool, but he's strong as a lion. Who is this Simon? With his bare hands, he tore up the headstone from the floor of the church and under it was the missing key. I can't read anything else but musty passage to an ancient tomb. I won't get anything done in this way. I feel like I'm... I won't get anything done in this way. Now it's full of clean water. Here's your pot of clean water. Thanks, kid. If you ever need your auntie, you can count on her. This stuff really stains. I've got to be careful not to spill it on anything valuable. What's happening? Oh no! My precious little car! Damned hooligans! My poor little thing! Don't worry, Daddy will clean you! Excellent. Now the pointer has moved from east to south.
Wait a second. This book has a royal emblem on it. Let me see. Hmm. Wow. This is a manuscript of Christopher Columbus's travels. Interesting. Let's read. We are in an unknown and mysterious sea. The compass turns on its own and, in the night, the crew gave the alarm after seeing strange shining fish around the Santa Maria. Our position on the charts, 30 degrees latitude and 70 degrees longitude. I'm sure the professor also read those notes, but why leave them here? I've no need for these smelly things. I don't understand. There's only this big M on the bottom. Maybe it's the initial of the pirate Mancusi. A pile of moldy rags that smell really bad. Chief, how much were you charged to take me? Look, I've got a map. Nothing. Wonderful. Let's go right now. You didn't understand, son. Nothing, because I won't take you there. But your sign says boat tours. If I go out, I want to come back. I took those other guys, too, and I'm not going back. You must be mad to want to go there. I still have some years to enjoy in this life. Professor and his assistant? You've got to tell me what happened to them. Stubborn like you. They went out there, and there they disappeared. Swallowed by the sea. Good for them. You want the same end? Have a nice trip. I'll stay home. Listen, Chief, I've got to go there. I've got money. All the money you want. It's simple. I'm not going there. There's stuff you can't buy with money. With what then? There's only one way to go there. Oh. With old tweezers. With old tweezers, you can sail through a hurricane. Tweezers? Who's that? Tweezers is not a guy. Tweezers is my good luck white crab. I lost him. <sighs> Without tweezers, I won't do anything. Listen, Chief, if I find your tweezers, you will take me there, all right? You'll never find tweezers. If tweezers hasn't come back yet, it means that he's dead. Or he's been kidnapped. I told you once and I'll tell you again. Without tweezers, I don't go anywhere. I'm going to just sit here and ponder life. Get ready to leave. I'll see you in an hour with tweezers. Wait, let me give you this. It's his favorite food. Poor little thing, he must be starving. I didn't know gum trees were on the island. I 
won't get anything done in this way. Here's your pot of clean water. Thanks, kid. If you ever need your auntie, you can count on her. Yes, I've got you now. Hi, Aunt Judith. Here I am again. Can you do something for me? You see this crab? Could you paint it white? Paint it white? Oh, sure. What I really need is a little drop of rum. At your age, Aunt Judith, you really shouldn't drink. Tut, tut, tut. You don't want to challenge old Aunt Judith as far as rum is concerned. Listen, dear. I've been raised on rum, and with rum, they'll bless me at my funeral. 
Give me the bottle, and I'll paint that crab paisley if you want. Just what I needed. Give it to me. I've painted on canvas, bricks, and even on people before, but never a crab. Here we go, brand new. Leave me now. I've just had a flash of inspiration. And I have no rum left, but... I've got a new and improved tweezers. Let's go. Here I am again, and this time I'm not alone. Oh, tweezers, my friend! Where have you been? What are you waiting for, kid? Quick, let's go! Professor got here in this thing, but now it's flooded. I think it's completely wasted. This appears to be the black box recorder. I'll take it with me. I'm sure the editor will know how to use it. can't push it open, and I don't see anything that can. I'm curious to see what's on the other side. Something tells me this thing can open the port. There's some kind of icon, too. There is a small slot here. Could this be for some kind of key? Hey, Chief, did I promise you results or what? Good job, Kendall. Did you find the professor? Well, not quite, but I've got something here that might tell us what became of him. Hmm, a 
black box? Hang on a second. I have just the thing for this. I think this jack here will fit into, uh... Ah, yes. Here we go. We're in front of the biggest archaeological discovery of this century. Quick, Helen, let's get on the diving gear and go open that entrance door. But, Professor, how? With this little thing, dear Helen. A colored rock? This isn't a rock, but a key conceived by a technology superior to ours. Hey, yo, hey, Professor, ain't that the thing we found underneath that pile of bricks? That was no pile of bricks, Simon, but the remains of the deconsecrated Church of St. Theodore in the English county of Avon. Thanks to many years of patient research, I managed to find that abandoned church and a secret that was for centuries hidden behind those sacred walls. Yeah, yeah. And now you're wasting time telling us how you did it. Come on, let's go. The sub has been damaged by the crash, and it's starting to take on water. This time, I agree, Blower. Everybody ready? Come on, let's get out of here. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Interesting? I risked my life diving the depths of the ocean to get that, and all you say is interesting? Tell me, Kendall, what else did you find there? Not a lot. An abandoned sub and a gigantic stone portal in the rock. Come on, Kendall, don't you understand? You need to do an inspection of that church mentioned by the professor. Maybe you'll find other clues there to help us find out what's behind this disappearance. Don't tell me I've got to leave again. Straight away. I'd really like to go in your place, Kendall, but see, I have to work on this piece about uh, dead languages. Great fun for a connoisseur, but you... Uh, don't tell me. I wouldn't appreciate it. Okay, I'm out of here. Damn, the mung has broken, and the cloth is dirty with resin. I guess I pushed the cloth around a little too hard. That has closed the leak. Come on, Carolina, keep going. What's the weather like up there? You're being funny. Look, picking fruit is a very hard job. Leave me alone. I don't have time to talk. Can I hold the ladder for you? It looks dangerous. No, thanks. I don't need any help. Well, this little girl knows what she's doing. What's your name? Polly Jane. And this is Attila, my little cat. Attila? Right now, he's an ordinary farm cat, but in a few years, he'll become a, a tiger protecting me from outsiders who disturb me while I pick fruit. 
Are you from here? Yeah, born and bred. Why don't you come down here for a second and talk to me? No, no, I've got to finish here. It's a nice place. Is that church very old? Yeah, it's medieval. But it's not used anymore. Not for many, many years. There must be ghosts at night. Joke about it if you want. But I wouldn't stay a night in there for anybody or anything. The wind through the windows makes strange noises, and inside it's full of tombs. Ooh, it's weird. But you made me curious. I'm gonna have a look. Will you stick around until I get back? I don't know. Goodbye, and don't anger the spirits. I think I'll let you work. I'm sorry to disturb you. See ya. Well, goodbye. Here you go, little kitty. Help yourself. Cats are strange creatures. Now it's purring. Here we go. Who knows how many sins have been forgiven in there? Wow, this time I really had a great idea. We have a success. It looks like a secret passage. Only one way to find out where it goes. I don't see anything here I'm interested in. It's a tunnel for the archaeological digging. I feel claustrophobic just looking at it. The decayed remains of its inhabitant, whoever it was, This symbol reminds me of something. Ah, that's right. It was at the bottom of the ocean. The professor must have found the key here that he talks about in his note. Look, this picture looks similar to Stonehenge, but with all the stones in place. I really must go there. Hmm. I wonder what that thing is above the stones. A gem, perhaps. This mysterious writing looks very ancient. My editor would probably love it.
I've got a tracing of these hieroglyphics with the white side of this sheet and the ashes in this urn. It definitely looks similar to the statues on Easter Island. Something tells me that should be my next stop. Look, this picture looks similar to Stonehenge, but with all the stones in place. I really must go there. Hmm, I wonder what that th is above the stones. A gem, perhaps. Look, Simon! We have the world at our feet! Boss, these buttons look interesting. They give me an idea. Let me see. This button is moving the crosshairs on the planisphere. Let me do it, animal. Well, let me see. This way moves it east and west, and this way moves it north and south. Good, good. Try to point at San Francisco. My mother-in-law is in San Francisco. Well, let's see if I can manage to get her on my life. Once and for all. Who cares about your mother-in-law? There's power here like I've never seen before. These buttons have a specific meaning. I think this symbol means a storm, and this is a tornado. Do you mean that we can command the elements as we like? It would certainly appear so. Well, come on, boss. Let's try. What's happening? Snow in London? Bolts from the blue? The weather is going mad. What a strange object. It's a heavy metal octagon with flat crystals embedded onto each side. I wonder what it is. Here I am, back in old London town. The smell, the sights, oh, I love this place. Good to see you, Kendall. But you don't look 100%. Are you okay? Uh, first things first. How did the last game go? Did we win? Nope. They lost badly. Don't make that face. There are more important things in life. Well, like what? Dead languages, for example. Very exciting. Then have a look at this and knock yourself out. I think I'll devote myself to football in future. All this research on the professor will be good for nothing but the garbage dump. You don't have enough faith in yourself, Kendall. Don't give up. I trust your abilities. You deserve more than the sports section. Actually... Well, let's have a look here. Hmm. Yes, interesting. You've discovered something hot. Like what? Some ancient recipe for Stegosaurus burgers? Seriously, Kendall. This is a rare copy of an ancient Tuareg dialect. Where on earth did you find it? 
under an abandoned English church. You said it was a Tuareg dialect. What's that? Well, the Tuareg are an ancient African tribe. You found it in a church? Hmm, now that is odd. I don't understand how it got there. Oh well, too bad. I guess this is a lost cause. Well, at this point, all we can do is set our heart and soul into winning the championship. You know, I was thinking about writing an article that compared the skill of Stanley Matthews to the current day English center forwards. <laughs> what do you think? Hmm, the only person I know able to translate this stuff is the Prince Amir. He was a genius at Oxford and graduated with honors. A real golden boy and not just because of the fortune he'll inherit. Or... What about a nice article about the symbolic meaning of the Cameroon team shirts? The readers have been waiting for that for a while. Endo, pay attention! And you leave, tell my secretary to make reservations for a flight to Tamanrasset via Algiers. The flight leaves tonight. Find Prince Amir and get this translated! I was thinking about the Cameroon team. I'm sure you can find another sucker to get this translated. I'll just, uh... Prince Amir's a nice guy, you'll see! Say hello to him for me, Kendall. Oh well, we're losing the championship anyway. I don't really need to be around for the final defeat. Hello, young woman. I'm an English journalist. My name is Richard, and I'm here to find a person called Amir. Do you know him? He's a very well-traveled and highly educated member of the Tuareg village. My boss, the editor, you know, he asked me to talk with him. Stranger, you have his wife, Lala, in front of you. Tomorrow, you will have his widow. Why? What do you mean? Not too long ago, the village celebrated for three days and three nights the wedding between Amir and Lala, the daughter of the tribe's chief. But the wedding banquet quickly became a funeral wake. Amir, your husband? Is he dead? You don't understand, stranger. Amir will die tomorrow, accused of killing my father, the chief of the Tuareg tribe, so he could inherit his title. I'm here in front of the tent of my ancestors, crying for my father, since I don't have any more tears to cry for my husband. Do you think that Amir is innocent? My father's ghost appeared last night in the tent and swore to me that he would never have given me in marriage to an evil man. Amir is innocent. The real murderers are part of a conspiracy. Where's your husband now? He of regal birth has been beaten like a dog, humiliated like a slave, and is now lying locked inside the condemned cell. Let me enter the tent. I need to rest to think it over. No strangers will ever enter this tent. Only Tuareg princes are admitted here. Please? I don't know you. I can't be sure of what you really want. Let me pray, stranger. An orphan and a widow is asking you to respect her mourning. They may look attractively ethnic, but there's no privacy. They may look attractively ethnic, but there's no privacy. Enjoying your meal, my friend? M may I interrupt you for a moment? You're already doing it! I'm looking for someone able to translate mysterious writing. I'm willing to pay. Get out of here! Don't you see I'm eating? I have one question before I go. Do you know Prince Amir? Amir is not a prince anymore! What do you mean? After what he did, he doesn't deserve any title! What happened? Ask him! He's the one locked in a fort's prison! And that was three questions! Now get out!
What nice architecture. Simple, functional, subtle, kind of dull, really. That makes no sense at all. Are you the officer in charge of the prisoner? Soldier Narabuff. Guard of the prison for 20 years, 7 months, and 14 days. Bad job, I guess. Hey, do you know Prince Amir? Stranger, you don't seem to be with the tour. What are you looking for? Don't you know it's forbidden to talk with soldiers while carrying out their duties? Sorry, but I didn't mean to distract you. I just wanted to ask you if you know this man. If you have a look inside there, You'll see what's left of him. He's locked in the cell, waiting to be hung. What did the prince do to be treated like this? Sure, a prince treated like a dog is something that has never happened before. Well, new chiefs, new laws. Tell me what happened. The chief of the tribe, as maybe you already know, has been shot. A rifle shot to the middle of his throat. But where were you? I was at the fort's entrance, as usual, and I ran. But for what? His head was apart from the rest of his body, and nothing could be done for him. Later, three women were needed to clean up the blood. Ugh, what a terrible sight. That's what happens when you're rich. If you stay in your poor hole, nobody comes looking for trouble. Then what does Prince Amir have to do with all this? It has to do with the strange coincidence that the gentleman was just practicing his shooting around the corner. Couldn't it have been an accident? A nice accident if you inherit the leadership of the tribe. The prince had the right to the succession after the chief's death, since he married his daughter. But he couldn't wait. The chief was as healthy as a horse who doesn't want to die. Can you imagine him dying for the nice face of the little prince and his modern ideas? Didn't they get along well? It's not that. The king loved the prince. He did. But they couldn't understand each other. Two hard heads, but each with his own ideas. What do you mean? The old man was made of the old style, tied to the ancient traditions. The young boy is a crazy one. He would like to do everything the Western way, and the king didn't like it. Did they argue a lot? Sure they did. Just the night before the tragedy, I heard them yelling. The boy sold some dromedaries without his permission, and with the money, he bought some kind of evil car. We get only trouble from you Western people. He was right, the old man. Well, how about you? What do you think about it? Well, I'm not paid to think about his innocence or guilt. Good. My visit is over. That's fine. I don't like strangers. You're very hospitable around here. Stay out of trouble. We still use corporal punishment, and a couple of lashes wouldn't look that good on your pale skin. I know what I'm doing. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, you. Can you hear me? Who's there? Aren't you tired of tormenting me? No. I'm not one of the guards. I won't hurt you. I can't see anything. They beat me up. Listen, I'm looking for Amir, the prince. You found him. Or at least what's left of him. I understand this is not the best moment to ask you this, but I need your help. My friend, I think there's no one who needs help more than I do right now. But if I can help... Do you know this language? Can you translate it? I'd like to help you, but believe me, I, I can't even see your face from all the beatings I got. Do you think there's anybody who will know it? There is a man who can certainly help you. He's the holy man of Agar Mountain. He can do everything except set me free, even if he does care about me a lot. Why did they treat you like this? It's barbarous treatment, isn't it? 
Maybe in your country they don't even treat animals like this. Don't be so sure about that. Well, if I was going to become king, as I was supposed to, I would have abolished these horrors. But somebody has made that impossible. What happened? A very cunning conspiracy. The king of the Tuareg tribe was shot just as I was shooting outside the fort, as I do every day when the sun goes down. So it was natural to charge you with the murder? By somebody who had their own reasons to do so. A few days ago, I married Lala, the daughter of the chief who was killed. And because of this marriage, and my royal family, I had the right to inherit the crown. Evidently, there are others trying to get it. I did not kill King Ibrahim. For me, he was like a father. His wisdom and his justice would have been mine in governing. Do you believe me? I believe you, Amir. Glories to Allah. Can you prove that the murder of the king is someone else? If I could, do you think I'd still be here eating rancid bread? Do you suspect somebody? I know very well who'd like to see me dead, but how can I prove it? Can I do anything for you? Very little, but maybe... Tell me, I want to help you. Really? I think you may be the right person. Take this ring to Lala, my wife. Only with this will that saint of a woman trust you and help you in finding the guilty person. I'll go. I'll be thankful to you for the rest of my life, even if my life should end tomorrow. I've got to go, Amir. I have a job to do here. You two leave me to my destiny. If I could help you, I would. Believe me. Allah watches over you. Don't despair. I'll pray. Goodbye. Excuse me, sir. Yes, stranger. How can I help you? Actually, I only need some information. Nothing can be denied to a guest of the Tuareg tribe. Please, come in. Have a look around. Thank you. In my shop, you'll find the most luxurious oriental goods. Lotions to lose your hair. Pigeons with wonderful voices. Odorless perfumes. Mattresses of nails and cactus spines. And... Thank you, but I only wanted to ask you if you know Prince Amir. Prince Amir? You've got the wrong man. For that kind of stuff, you have to go to the prison guard. But how about a sand croquet? It only costs two coins. No, no. Thank you anyway. It's getting late. I better be going. Come back again, stranger. You can't leave our country without having tasted a sand croquet. Your bazaar is really well stocked. You appear to have a wonderful selection of goods. How's business? We've been merchants for seven generations. Our clients are among the most illustrious. Would you like to look around? If looking doesn't cost anything. Of course it doesn't. Would you like a cup of crocodile flavored tea? No, thanks. Here we have spices which you can't find anywhere else in the East and which our women use to poison their husbands. Then, over here, the pewter samovar, and here the silver samovar. Ah, they are used for the crocodile tea. Very appreciated among the tourists. What about these rugs? I see that you have a good eye. Take one back home with you, and they will bring beauty to any home. No thanks. I don't think they would suit my home. But thanks anyway. Then bring your mother some spices. She'll use them to cook very tasty meals. Actually... You immediately see a good deal. You're a smart guy. I suggest for you two jars of each of the hundred royal spices. A very good deal. They are on sale. And if you also buy a rug, I'll give you this scale pillow to rest your feet. Uh, thank you, but actually, I don't need anything. It's a deal, young man. The people back home always appreciate a scale pillow from a far away trip. It's hard to say. Here, the prices are really good. Shall I pack everything together, or do you prefer three different packages? I'm sorry, but really, I don't need anything. Thank you. Now I better go. You won't find such scale pillows anywhere else during your trip, remember? I'll think it over. Goodbye. See you again, stranger.
This unfortunate incident is very serious for your tribe. What's gonna happen now? If you are talking about the chief's murder, it was deceitful and premeditated aggression. Do you think so? Sure. The Prince Amir had the audacity to break our sacred laws, but he'll be punished. But let's not talk about this. Do you want to buy something? Like maybe a bag of tar tobacco? A collection of gigantic butterflies? They're absolutely necessary on a long trip. Who's going to rule the tribe now? There will be long consultation between the people and the leaders. And finally, they will give forth a decision. The new chief will be elected by the Tuareg, not through inheritance. Try this mixture of dromedary-flavored herb. You'll never be able to live without it. Only three coins. No thanks. I'm allergic to anything that has dromedary in it. Goodbye. Damn tourists with no money. Lala, I'm bringing you the sign of my friendship between you and your husband. Look. Oh, this is the ring which sealed my marriage. Where did you get it? Your husband gave it to me to bring you. You need to trust me, Lala. I'm your friend. As Amir gave you this ring, which my father bestowed upon him to seal the wedding promise, you are, for me, my husband's brother. And I have to obey you. They may look attractively ethnic, but there's no privacy. I'm wasting time. Enjoying your meal, my friend? M may I interrupt you for a moment? You're already doing it! Get out! I've heard about the murder of your chief. Good! You can tell it to your grandchildren when you get old! I'd like to know more about it. What do you want from the Tuareg tribe, stranger? I I'm a journalist working on an assignment in this area. We journalists, we're a curious race. I say meddlers! If you prefer, were you present when it happened? Unlike you journalists, I'm always somewhere else when trouble happens. What do you mean? If you really want to know, I was in the bazaar. See, I twisted my ankle. I was just having it treated. How did that happen? It's puffed up like a balloon. It's all because of that damn dromedary. He saw a snake, unsaddled me, and ran away. I gave him many lashes afterwards. Now he's tied up out there, thinking about his faults. I'm wasting time. They may look attractively ethnic, but there's no privacy. Let me enter the tent. I need to rest to think it over. In this tent, no stranger has ever left his print. But you have my husband's ring. And I can read good intent in your eyes. Go in, but make sure nobody sees you. You can see the fort from here. Its size and shape would suggest that it was caused by a bullet. 
These pieces are useless to me. Several pieces of a pot that has broken. The inside seem to have been covered in some kind of powder. Well, listen, you must tell me everything you know about your father's death. Where you were, when he was killed, and what you were doing. You twist the knife in a wound still bleeding. You have to make this sacrifice to save Amir. I'll tell you. I was resting from the fatigue of the wedding ceremony. I was in my father's tent. I was waiting for my husband to take me for the first time to his tent. I've never entered it. Amir was in prison. And we haven't even kissed. When the murder happened, did you notice something? I was sleeping and dreaming about my husband. Suddenly, a crash awoke me. What was it? From the central pole of the tent, a sacred pot of the tribe fell. A pot where the chiefs from generation to generation conserved the colors to paint their faces before a battle. Now I know that this was the premonition of tragedy. Thank you, Lala. I'll do everything I can to help. May Allah protect you. Several pieces of a pot, the insides. There is a bullet in the pole, and there is a hole in the tent. If I look in the direction of the bullet through the hole, I'll discover where it came from. The top of the fort is just in the line of the bullet's path. I don't think it's a coincidence. Enjoying your meal, my friend? M may I interrupt you for a moment? What do you want again? I told you to go away! You can't come in like this! I've got the impression that my presence here is not appreciated. I won't disturb you any longer. Goodbye. Goodbye, pest! Thank you, Lala. I'll do everything I can to help. Wait! What do you want to tell me? You're a man. Yes, at least the last time I looked. You don't understand. Let me finish. You're a man, so you've the right to enter the fort where my husband is kept prisoner. So? Take this food to him. The prisoners are fed with a horrible gruel, not fit even for pigs. Amir is only used to eating regal fare. He must be hungry. I'll do it. May Allah protect you. I've got something better than that horrible brew they give you here. Oh, how can I thank you? I haven't eaten in two days. It's impossible to eat this stuff without being sick. This is coming from friendly hands. It's food prepared by Lala. Oh, my sweet wife! Give me the food before somebody sees you. You could be punished for doing this. Well, here. Get some strength. Thank you, stranger. You're like a brother.
Is your food good? Your wife, is she a good cook? I must confess, my friend, that it was wonderful. A young wife can sometimes overcook the meat. No, my friend. The flavor was perfect. But the filling was hard enough to break your teeth. Look at this. Wow. Your young wife is wiser than she looks. Unfortunately, this lockpick is useless. The cell is so confining, I can't reach the lock. Take it. If they find it on me, I'll only receive more punishment. Tire marks. Let me see. There are some drops of oil, and the trails go off to the east. I could follow these tracks, but I don't see why it would do any good. What's happened to you? Let me help you. Ooh, my head. We are doomed. The sacred amaret. Ooh. He took the sacred amaret. Sacrilege. Oh, my head. We are doomed. A curse will be called down on all the Tuareg tribes. The scrolls predicted. Allah curse him. You were hit badly on your head. Relax now and tell me what happened. Who are you, stranger? What are you looking for from the preeminent holy man Gadir Ahmed? I'm a journalist. My name is Richard Kendall. But tell me, what happened to you? A man with no fear of Allah deceived me and stole the gem which has always protected the Tuareg tribes, the sacred Amerit. When did it happen? Last night, the traitor asked for hospitality during a sandstorm. I welcomed him, fed and protected him, but then he hit me on the back of the head and knocked me out. And so he ran away with the precious gem? What did he look like? Do you remember? He was blind in one eye. A black eye patch was covering the missing eye. Of course you don't know where he could have gone. When I regained consciousness, I managed to drag myself to the door, just in time to see him leaving in an old jeep going towards the south. What's there? Some villages of, oh my head, sacrilege, sacrilege. Allah forgive me. I must pray a lot now to obtain the divine forgiveness. I was the god of the gem and I have failed in my duty. Don't distress yourself. It was not your fault. We'll do something. Now rest. Listen, it's no coincidence that I came up to your cave. What are you looking for, stranger? I know you can read the languages of your ancestors, and that you can translate these ancient inscriptions. Yes, those of my calling have the task of preserving Tuareg knowledge. So, help me. Look at this paper. Can you understand this language? Allah be always praised! Where did you find these inscriptions? Oh, in Europe, in a tomb of an ancient Christian church. 
All this is very strange. What's the meaning of this inscription? The translation into your language would be similar to this. Green and light as seaweed, but powerful as a wave. On its eight regular sides, crystals from Atlantis shine. From you, our strength, magic stone. In you is reflected the ocean civilization. You lead us to Levidium, as precious as black coral. Magic lighting stone, you lead us to Levidium, our life and transportation source. Do you understand the meaning of these words? No, stranger, but you will in time. Goodbye, holy man. My task here is over. Goodbye, stranger. It is my wish that Allah will take care of you for the rest of your life. You are a clever and fair man. It's built from a strange metal and those markings look similar to those I found in the tomb. Hey, my pocket's buzzing. Somehow, this door has made that green octagon from the church glow wild. I won't get anything done this way. What is that? A door. Where does this door lead to? It's an ancient secret of our people. What are those strange drawings decorating it? It's the Tuareg memory, the history of our origins. I'd like to see what's behind this door. It's not possible. Behind it is the cave of the mystery. Only by knowing the sacred word do you have the right to open it. I think it's better not to disturb him after all he's been through. It's a long shot, but I think that if I follow those marks, I'll find the one-eyed man. Hello. Hello. What? Sorry? I don't understand. Don't you speak my language? Ah, what relief. I got a terrible toothache, so I can't talk properly. Only these marvelous potty pills can help me, but only for a few minutes, unfortunately. Ah, uh, a toothache is a terrible thing. Listen, have you seen a guy wearing an eyepiece around here? Do you mean Kalot? Sure, he's the one supplying me with the potty. Allah thanks him. He's here in a little square behind the shop. I let him use it for free in exchange for the potty. Is he here right now? He is. At this time he always plays his game, you eat asses. Oh, no, again? Well, I'll leave you with your potty. Thanks. I didn't really understand this game, Ooh, he asses. Yeah, he said it. Oh, where's your potty? I can remember that free. It's a strange powder inside here. Keep your hands off my stock! Are you talking to me? Stay away from my shelf. There are some things there I don't want you to put your dirty little hands on. What a rude guy. 
You try and steal something from under his nose, and all he does is whine. An inviting delicacy for any disease-infested rodent. What are you doing? Uh, suddenly I felt hungry. So did you eat the rat bait? Look, it's not good for you. Hey you, tell me something. Have you ever heard about Amarat? Agrahat? Oh yes, a quiet beach where I danced under the moon with three little gypsy girls. How could I forget? No, not Agdahat. Amarat. Sure, a dollar. Uh, who doesn't know that sweet aphrodisiac drink? I just have a little bottle of it which I'd never give up for anything in the world. But I like you, stranger. For ten coins, it's yours. No, my pronunciation is not perfect, but I said Amarat. It's a gem. Sure, Atara! The gem of all the cities, the ancient mosque, glory to Allah, with a hundred blue spires. Yes, stranger, it's really worth a visit. Straight that way for 750 kilometers or so. You're not only blind, you're deaf too, aren't you? I said Amarat. A-H-M-A-R-A-T. The sacred gem of the Tuareg people. The one that generations of holy men have been in charge of. I have no idea what you are talking about, my dear boy. How does this game work? Do you want to try? It's easy. But only smart people can win. Are you smart? Show me. Well, here we have three perfectly identical glasses. See? No tricks. Touch them. Test them. Three normal glasses. Do you see? Okay, three glasses. And here we have a little snuff box. A souvenir from a nice little girl who took my heart. Uh, but now let's not think about the past. I put the snuff box under this glass. Let me check. Mistrustful! Here, here it is. See? No tricks. And now? bam ba bam 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 bin I move quickly. Turn. Where's the box, dear sir? Here's the game. Do you want to bet on your guess? Now, I should bet my money against yours. And if I guess correctly, I take the money, right? See? You're smart. So, do you want to play? I don't like to waste money. Don't you like a risk? You are not gambling man. Bye. Why do you have rat bait around here? Don't you know? We're crazy about it around here. About what? Rat meat. It's a king's delicacy. Look carefully. This is not a poison, which could be tough to digest. It's only a narcotic. The rat eats, falls nicely asleep, and bam! I grab it and I prepare some croquettes with it. Croquettes? Rat croquettes. Food for connoisseurs. But only if the rat has been tranquilized, because as I told you before, poison makes digestion hard, while rat meat is very light and nutritious. It's a traditional recipe, isn't it? I'd say ancient, but don't ask me how to take the skin off and clean the rat's innards, because it's a professional secret. <laughs>
I won't ask you. I promise. You want to? I'm a I was saying, do you want one? They were just made. Mm, what a great smell. I'd love one. Thank you. Try it, try. I've cooked rat croquettes every day for 20 years. And I still can't resist the temptation of eating a couple of them each morning. A harmless little habit. I'll put it away for now, because it, it's still a little too hot. Are you crazy? Rat croquettes must be eaten right away, while they're still hot. I prefer to eat it this way instead. Goodbye. Come back if you want some more. Or if you wish, I could dry some to take away for your trip. Somebody says they're even better than the fresh ones. Uh, cold rat croquettes, disgusting. Strange taste, those American guys. Hey, you! Oops! Him! <laughs> Is there something wrong, my friend? What are you doing with that tube? And why do you care? Is it your car? No, but you're not supposed to do that. Mind your own business! At your age, do you still steal fuel with rubber tubes? That's something young boys do. Well, I'm young in spirit, and so what? For such a small amount, you could have bought the fuel. Buy? I don't know the meaning of the word. Well, how do you survive? Like this. With rubber tubes for the fuel and double pockets in the supermarket. You're an expert at those tricks, aren't you? To be modest, it's an ancient family tradition. Roots are roots, aren't they? Sure. My father was the mentor for me and my brother. And before him, my grandfather and great-grandfather and so on. Oh, illustrious family, I see. An ancient pirate family, no less. You've gone down in the world if you're just a petty thief. Each period has its habits anyway. For your information, besides these little things, I'm an expert in bag snatching, any kind of robbery, scams, frauds, dice, and card tricks. I open safes and locks, I can open any gate, and I avoid alarm systems. I am here to serve you, my friend. My name is Tobias. Also called the Black Sheep. That reminds me of something. Of course! I've already seen that tattoo you have on your arm. Impossible! Only we, the descendants of the Rum K Pirates, have it. Sure, you're the brother of the sailor on Rum K Island. He told me about Black Sheep. The one who as a kid was the only one to be caught while stealing Grandma's biscuits. Silly old woman! She was very smart, and man could she hit! She used to say, stupid, I caught you every time. Take this and learn. And this and this. Next time you'll be smarter. You learned your lesson thanks to those smacks. Yep, life is funny. <laughs> How's my big brother? Fine, fine. He goes around saying that if he sees you, you will regret it. You did something really bad to him. Hmm, he's never been one to jest. How do you make your living around here? With my hot air balloon, mainly. Hot air balloon? Yes. I do panoramic tours while I pick the pockets of the tourists. That's what I do to make some money. A tourist comes on my balloon to take pictures of the area. I bring him up high. I hit the line, the basket moves, and he's scared to death. So he doesn't pay attention while I take his wallet. What do you think? Wonderful. Well, it's obvious this profession is in your blood. If you feel like it, we can have coffee in my hut later. Don't take this the wrong way, but uh, I'd rather not go for a coffee with a grown man in a sailor's suit. No, you get the wrong idea. I just want you to tell me about my big brother. Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye. Enjoy your work.
You live here, so you must know a lot of things about the island and its legends. Tell me about them. Not now, I told you. I'm busy. If you feel like it, we can have coffee in my hut later. Maybe. Come on, I've got to work now. See you later. There's no bulb or even electricity. Shipwrecks probably occur more often now. Wow, I always wanted to control a beacon. Nice place here under the sun all day long. How are things? Wonderful. I was just thinking about frying some eggs. Do you want some? Nah, thanks. How was the tour with the hot air balloon? Not bad. $200 for the wallets and 20 for the pictures. Pictures? All right, I confess. I also use some legal ways to make money. I sell pictures of the big heads to the tourists. Do you mean pictures of the famous statues? Sure, they go nuts for them. Here. Take one as a souvenir. It's a gift. Thanks. Look, he looks like my cousin Philip. You must know the island like the back of your hand from your balloon up there. What about all the legends being told around here? Here's a good summary of them. The 1,000 Mysteries of Easter Island, Martians or Giants. Subtitle, The Answers of Real Science and Modern Parapsychology. Finally, a book answering the questions worrying humanity. Only $10. It's selling really well. Well, uh, I meant something. How should I say it? Uh, more authentic? Like, uh, I don't know, some personal observations? Do you want to know the whole truth? Always. In my opinion, those big heads are a modern invention to bring in tourists. Who the hell do you think would come to this forsaken, awful place? The island is interesting for what is less visible, not for those stupid big things. What do you mean? So it's not a coincidence that you buried yourself in this corner of the world? I never do anything without a reason. Wise, don't you think? Anyway, I am convinced that down here, somewhere around this damned oceanic rock, there's something. But let's forget about that. Uh, tell me, I, I don't understand what you're trying to say. To decode meanings, follow prints, solve enigmas. I haven't done anything else for a long time. It's almost a mission. I really don't understand you. Are you philosophizing? Not at all. Nothing is more concrete. Consider me a scientist who has dedicated his life to the research of, uh, I don't know, an unknown language. I'm not saying anything more. This all has an unpleasantly familiar taste. Well, I think I got something very interesting for you. A bottle of gin? I'm really interested in gin bottles. I collect them, you know. 
Look at this thing. There's only a signature. Yes, but don't you recognize whose it is? Hmm. Let me take a closer look. But this is the signature of the pirate Mancusen. Where did you find this thing? On Rumke Island. This parchment is useless. Perhaps if it had a map on it with a big arrow and the word treasure, now that would be a nice gift. Maybe you can help me. Have you ever seen a language like this before? Well, let me see. Where did I already see something like this? In the igloo of Bakule? At the Arctic Circle? Oh, no. No, no, I, I'm confused. Here we go. Maybe they were the inscriptions at the bottom of a Greek temple in the Egad Islands. Greece? Uh, I want to go back home. No, not there. Wait, let me concentrate. Yes, in Tierra del Fuego, carved in the cups of the local people. Tierra del Fuego? Oh, heavens. I would have been such a great sports writer. No, now everything is clear. They're right here on Easter Island, in a cave you'll find at the end of the path. Ooh, that's good. A, a cave. What kind of cave? Now it's dangerous. Of course. A family of wild, gigantic bats lives in there. I once went inside there because of uh, ahem, uh, scientific research. But since there are those things up there, I don't dare go in anymore. Well, can you tell me exactly what the mystery is you're hiding? Well, I'm here for a specific reason. I'm convinced that on this island, there's a treasure that I've been looking for around the world for years. It's the treasure of the pirate Mancusen, my illustrious ancestor. Sure, your brother said something about it, but why right here? I can't tell you, but I'm sure about it. Now we're talking. Now I have them. What shall I do with them? A family of wild, gigantic bats lives in there. I'm not going inside. It's scary. I wonder what this rock in the center is for. Hi, how you doing? Nice day, isn't it? What's going on? I'm studying the flight of the swallow. Is there something you want? You know, when I was a kid, my dream was to drive a tractor just like this. You don't say. What are you doing here? Nothing anymore. Everything is stopped. Why? The car park was to be made larger, but during construction, a woman from National Heritage arrived and said, Stop everything! There's a find here you can't dig any longer. A find? Right. Do you see that stone? 
Well, that woman says it's not a stone, but a find. In such cases, they stop everything. They send the workers home, and that's it. We don't know what they'll do. That's a monolith. Whatever. The fact is, their work has stopped. Well, how about you? What are you still doing here? I'm trying to move this tractor back to the west yard, but I think the drive belt is broken since I can't move it. That's the end of a perfect day. Big trouble, I guess. Nothing compared to what happens when I tell my wife that I'm unemployed again. Perhaps I should send that woman from National Heritage to explain to my wife why this monolith is so important. It's almost impossible to open this door without the key. I think it's better not to disturb. They aren't really with the times. Where's the answering machine? Several half-full jars of paint. I don't know what to do with Lala, maybe you can help me. Do you know the holy man of the mountain? Yes, everybody knows him. He brings life to us when we are born, and death in our last moment of life. Well, do you know that in the cave where he lived, there's a door leading to another space deep within the rock? They say it contains ancient mysteries. Well, do you know the command to open it? No woman, saves or men of poor descent know it. Only those belonging to the royal family have the knowledge. It's impossible to open this door. There are two huge padlocks keeping this closed. Guard, I'm sure you can tell me why the turret is closed. What do you care about the turret? That old thing has been closed for many years. It's not useful to anybody. Well, it's a nice building anyway. Is it possible to visit it? If you want to get hurt, I closed it with a double lock because the stairs inside wouldn't even hold the dromedary's hair. 
good. My visit is over. That's fine. I don't like strangers. You're very hospitable around here. Stay out of trouble. We still use corporal punishment, and a couple of lashes wouldn't look that good on your pale skin. I know what I'm doing. Goodbye. Goodbye. Amir, I know that princes know the sacred command to open up the most secluded part of the cave. You're right. Well, tell me this word. It's very important to me. The sacred word is secret, and I swore on my life not to communicate it to anybody. But your life is in danger. That's nice to hear from somebody on the other side of the bars. I don't mean to be cruel. Listen, you swore on your life, but now you're losing it. I can help you to save it. In exchange for my help, you must tell me the command. This way of thinking is typical of you people from the West. Don't surrender to death because of a principle. We've been educated to respect principle. Think about Lala, who's already crying for the father she lost. Lala. Stranger, your word strikes to the heart. If you manage to bring me back to my wife, I'll reveal to you the sacred command. Do you swear it? I swear. I'm only wasting valuable time here. It may be rubber, but it looks like a snake to me. It looks like a rattlesnake I saw in a documentary one. Look how it's running. I never knew they could run that fast. It's already a little point on the horizon. Your dromedary broke its tether and is escaping. He's disappearing into the desert. You can only see a speck on the horizon. Oh, Allah, help me, quick! Which way did he go? Oh! Where are you going? You can't even stand. 200 coins lost in the sand? Let's not lose time in talking. Go and call the merchant. Tell him to come here with the jeep. I can't run with this leg. The merchant? Yes, quick. The merchant in the bazaar. Oh, my dromedary. There's no need to get quite so upset. They need you. Run! Does someone want to buy my scale pillows? Quick, let's go! It's not that. He's your friend with the twisted ankle. Haki? What happened to him? Has he run out of the pills I gave him? Strange. When my great-great-grandfather gave them to me, he told me they might be past their best. Does he have stomach pains? He needs your jeep to bring back his runaway dromedary. As quick as you can. Incredible! That dromedary seemed to be dying when I sold it to him. And yet, I sell good stuff.
A rifle. Don't people know it's dangerous to leave weapons lying around? Now I've got some filings of this strange metal. Your painting is very beautiful. I know. I'm really good. Well, other people should say so. Some do, but mostly I say it to myself. The best artists in our history did, and they were recognized only after they died. And what does the painting represent? It is one of my psychic night visions. I had strange and wonderful prophetic dreams. I see what is going to happen to people I meet before they even know about it. This picture represents the destination of your trip. Of my trip? I don't understand. Where is... Don't ask me that. But... You're not very smart. Look, I told you I have visions. Metaphysical dreams. Paranormal projections. Just because I can see the place doesn't mean I know where it is. Do you understand? More or less. What's that cross? It's not a cross. It's my son. An X? I'm illiterate, you see. I grew up in the forests, away from all civilization. Just me and my dad. Writing has never been a strong point, but painting. Your painting is very beautiful. I know. I'm really good. Indeed. I'd love to hear more about it, but I've got some urgent business to attend to. See ya. Okay. Keep yourself busy. Bye. Oh, uh, Aunt Judith, you know, I really like your painting. I'd really love to have one. Sure, kid. I couldn't ask for anything better myself, but what subject would you like? Hmm, here, look. My specialties are the savage plains with green horses running wild, but there's a big demand for portraits of goats with wigs and lace. I only... Not to mention sea scenes, endless depths of magnetic fields of protoplasm. And what about the landscape with carnivorous seaweed and mountain waterfalls? But I... And then nature, with its own movements and smells. Frogs, well known all over the world for the paleness of their pink flesh. And allegories of saints, demons, and... Uh... 
I would only like you to reproduce this picture. Picture? That's all? You should have told me right away. You didn't give me a chance. What about the canvas? What about it? Why do you think I'm going to paint on thin air? You're right. I'll find you something suitable as quickly as I can. Here you go. You may need this, Auntie. Let me see it. <gasps> Excellent canvas material. Very rare. It'll be a masterpiece. With your touch, for sure. Good. Leave it with me. Your picture will be ready in a while. Here I am again. What do you want, son? Do you have a gun? Why don't you stay in your own country? What are you looking for around here? Get out of here! How rude these natives are. Is this any way to promote tourism? I don't think so. I'm leaving. Hey, my friend. I got some good news for you. Are you leaving? I just got here. I've been on a trip. I've been many thousands of miles on the other side of the world, Easter Island to be precise. Do you know where that is? Yeah, but why should I care? Ah, because it's where your beloved little brother lives. Do you mean that slippery worm Tobias? That's right. He moved there and is still looking for the treasure of Mancusen. But till now, nothing. Is all this talk about the treasure just wishful dreaming? Not at all. A treasure exists somewhere. And that wretch is looking for it with my money. I hope that island is full of poisonous snakes. I don't know about that, but your brother told me to give you his dearest regards. Ha! I wish the earth would open up and swallow him down. I don't want to hear about him anymore. He makes me sick. Here I am again. What do you want, son? Old man, I need you to take me down there again. Why don't you stay in your own country? What are you looking for around here? Get out of here! How rude these natives are. Is this any way to promote tourism? I don't think so. I'm leaving. What nice big steak. I'm only wasting my time here. I'm only wasting my time here. He looks like a rich provincial guy. Smart yet narrow-minded. What's happening? It seems like a little troop of animals is assaulting your carcass. Allah help me. They're devouring my meat. The carnivorous termites. Help, help. They say they can devour a horse in a few minutes. Help, help, quick. Some fire, some pesticide, something, help. 
Good luck, my friend. I suggest you open up a vegetable stand next time. Ah, oh, poor me. Fate is against me. Ah, oh, poor me. Allah is punishing me for my fault. You can't do anything against Allah's will. Poor me. They're destroying a lifetime of work. I'm ruined. Poor me. My wife will leave me. My neighbors won't talk to me anymore. Poor me. I have to beg on the streets. Poor me. Poor me. I'm... I'm faint. This drug slop would knock an elephant out. I would like to know what's inside there. A secret trap door leading down to a dark, unforgiving passage. I feel like a character in a gothic novel. An abandoned box. It's nothing special. I'm wasting my time with this simple box. I think this is the shoe that left those prints.
another boat. Get ready to free Prince Amir. What are you saying, stranger? He's innocent, and I can show you. Boy, you're talking nonsense. Not at all. Do you see the shoe? So what? At the top of the turret, I found a fresh footprint, corresponding perfectly to this shoe. I told you you were talking nonsense. Let me finish. This is the shoe of Hacky, the merchant's friend. I found it in his tent. But that's not all. The bullet which killed the chief can't have been shot from the prince's rifle. The bullet's trajectory was different. Explain. In the tent of the chief, I found the hole caused by the bullet. And I can show you that it was shot from the top of the turret. Hacky shot from there. I'm sure of that. Boy, if what you say is true, there's a chance for the poor prince. Then let him out. He's innocent. I can't. This is not enough. We need more proof. You need proof clearer than this? No, no. I too suspect the prince is innocent. He's too naive to put together something this big. But I need more proof rather than speculation. I'll find you the proof. You just wait. Narrow, and yet strong iron bars. Narrow, and yet strong iron bars. These are tombstones. They send shivers up my spine. Narrow, and yet strong iron bars. Narrow, and yet strong iron bars. I don't think it's a good idea. Narrow, and yet strong iron bars. Narrow, and yet strong iron bars. Narrow, and yet strong iron bars.
Hey, so I'm not alone down here. Some... The little quick one is finally asleep. Do you think you can open this safe? A little safe? That's nothing. Well, here, try. I couldn't do it. You don't know who I am, boy. Tobias Black Sheep opens any kind of lock in less than three minutes. Here we go. Are you satisfied? Wonderful. Can you tell me the combination? Nothing easier. Five, one, seven. Are you satisfied? That was great. Thank you. Wow, there's a key inside the little safe. I wonder what it's for. There's a lot of stuff inside. A rifle, a drive belt, some flares, and some other junk. I'll take everything but the junk. You never know. Somebody else would have taken care of him if we hadn't. Shut up! That pest is coming! Good morning, everybody. What was that that you were talking about? Is that any way to enter? In my country, surprises are always appreciated. Am I disturbing you? Yes! Sorry, I only wanted to know what happened to the dromedary. Did you manage to catch it? Don't talk to me about that traitor! Curse him from his feet to his ears! Curse all of his family, father, mother, sons of a cousin up to the third grade! You didn't manage to get it? Sure we did. We followed him over half the desert. And when we were close to catching him, crack! The wretched animal fell and broke a leg. So what? All I could do was shoot him in the head and sell his carcass to an Algerian butcher. A strange guy with a toothache. It was impossible to understand him. It has been a very tiring negotiation. 
He was trouble even when dead. Cursed animal. Cursed the sand he walked on. And the air he breathed. And the water he drank. And the food he ate. Curse his saddle, his reins, and the ring in his nose. Oh, yes. Curse the ring I put in his nose. When he was still little, a nice gold ring inscribed with, I love my dromedary. How many sacrifices did I make for him? And this is the way he pays me back. Traitor, traitor, curse that cursed animal. Curse each hair of his skin. Curse each bone of his skeleton. Curse his hump and his little tail. His right eye. And left one, too. Okay, okay. I'm really sorry, but can we talk about something else? Uh, not now. We must have a look uh, at some new rugs in the back of the shop. Mustn't we? What? Uh, yes. Let's go. Oops, I kicked the dog. Shouldn't this damn dog be on watch? He doesn't wake up even if you walk on him. Is he dead? Not at all. This is a very dangerous dog. He pretends to sleep. In reality, he's watching and waiting for the enemy to tear them to pieces. If you say so, he seems dead to me. Trust him. He recognizes real danger. He rests here and pretends. Pretends? Sure he does. I trained him personally. In that case... And now, a very enjoyable period is beginning for us. Let's have fun! Let's have fun! What fun? We need to be shrewd if we want to get the results. We just made the first step. The second will consist in eliminating that fat wife of mine and buying a harem of young little flowers just for myself. A flower here, a flower there. Shut up! The second step will be to contact those Americans and sell them the rights to our uranium. We will set very high prices, not like those beggars of the Zimda tribe who sold their deposit for a few dimes and now they're still scraping the bottom of their frying pans. We won't be fooled with... We know very well how much such a big uranium deposit is worth. Enough to feed seven generations. I eat all the food of seven generations myself. I'm not giving anything to anyone. Good. You'll be a chief with a strong hand, and I'll be a trusted counselor. So, start advising me. We must convince the Tuareg people to elect me as their chief. First, you should marry the beautiful Lala. Her husband would inherit the right to rule. This sounds good. The little widow will be quickly comforted when she understands she'll gain something in exchange. Then, you already have a good reputation for your traditional ideas and your devotion to Islam. The fact that I am a true believer can't be denied. But the most important thing is that you have to promise the tribe that once you're elected, you will put back the ancient laws and will declare war on the Zimda tribe. Hate and the ancient laws always have an effect. Good Al will do great things. Our future is decided. And we are tied to each other by an unbreakable pact. Black and white, our contract is a guarantee for reciprocal trust. You'll be the chief of the tribe, and I'll be your trusted counselor. And 50% of the income to each of us. Everything is written and kept inside the safe. It will never be possible to betray each other. Our union is our strength. Did you get rid of the rifle? It is well hidden. Don't worry. What do you mean, hidden? You said you would destroy it with the acid. Take it easy. I'll do it today. Are you crazy? Where did you leave it? Go get it and destroy it immediately. It's inside the jeep. Don't worry. Nobody will look for it there. Be quick. You don't want to ruin everything because of something like that, do you? Trust me, have I ever created any trouble? There's a problem. What? We left some evidence. 
falling from those damn stairs in the turret. I dropped the silencer and I didn't have time to look for it. We need to get it right now. Do you remember where exactly? No, it's dark inside there. And then I twisted my ankle. I couldn't do anything. We have to go there together. You must show me where to look. Let's go through the secret passage. Nobody will see us. Do you know what this is? A rifle. So what? It's with this rifle that the chief was killed, not with Amir's rifle. Where did you find it? It was in the merchant's jeep. And the merchant is Hacky's accomplice. Have I convinced you now that Amir has nothing to do with the murder? Hmm. Actually, I think you're on to something. And that's not all. I also found a silencer. Look here, it fits perfectly. It was in the turret. Come on, let the prince free. The murder is hacky. No, no, I need something more concrete. This is all circumstantial evidence. You're tough to convince, but I'll succeed. This time you have to let him go free. What, again? What have you this time? Everything came together. I heard hacky and the merchant talking. They want to take control of the tribe. They killed the chief because they found the deposit of uranium and they want to use it. Who can guarantee me that you're not lying to free your friend? What would my interest be? I don't know yet, but I smell something. I don't trust your words, stranger. This is it. I can prove the conspiracy in black and white. This is the contract between the merchant and Hacky to use the uranium. Wow. You're right. See? What did I tell you? Let the prince free. I can't stand the injustice. Especially when people try to fool me. They'll pay for that. Excellent! Be quick! Lala is waiting for her husband. There's no time to lose. Here's the key. Let your friend free. I'll go get those two and I promise you, they'll regret what they did. Here we go. All is well that ends well, as they say in my country. With the help of Allah, thanks my friend and my brother, you saved my life and the happiness of my wife, bringing justice to my tribe. We'll remember you forever. Actually, remember, we made a deal. I don't forget a promise. So what's the command? Very corny. It's... Open sesame. 
I'd have never thought of that one myself. People often imagine the strangest things and instead... Well, now I'll go. I wish you all the happiness with Lala in your kingdom. Goodbye. Our first son will have your name. Actually, you never told me your name. Richard. Richard Ahmed Ibrahim Abdullah Kalamek. What do you think? Ricky to his friends. Wonderful. Goodbye. Allah loves you. I run to honor my wedding vows. It's about time, isn't it? Hurrah! Supreme Holy Man, I know the sacred command. How is it possible? A stranger? Who dared to reveal it to somebody unsuitable? I can't tell you their name, but be sure that the oath has not been broken. I, I only saved the life of somebody who had sworn on that life not to reveal the sacred command to anybody. And now you'd like to enter the cave of the mystery? I have to. Open sesame. Enter, stranger. You have the right to, but do not reveal to anybody what you will see. I promise you I will not. Thanks for your help, most holy one. A mysterious mechanism. It doesn't look like anything I know. This thing looks like a machine. Where does it come from? Who built it? I've never seen anything like this. Holy men have been handing down the legend for centuries. It's about a demigod who fell from the stars. He was flying on a silver eagle. The eagle lost its power, and the demigod crashed in the Tuareg territory. The Tuareg provide lodging and treated him well, and in exchange he taught us the medical arts. But he was unhappy, and nothing could make him forget his faraway home. With the wings and the stomach of the eagle, he built this thing which you call a machine. What is it for? The chest of the heavenly dreams has unfortunately been impossible to use for centuries. But was it used in the past? Yes. It was a tradition that the holy men, when being crowned, were wearing this crown. But this is a helmet. The crown was connected by these tendrils to the chest of the heavenly dream. The new minister was crowned in the chest of the heavenly dream, illuminated his imaginative soul with the faces and the words of the gods. Why isn't it working anymore? It's told that one of your ministers, called priest by Christian, arrived here from far away and stole one part of the chest. Why? What is sacred for the Tuareg is evil for Christian. From that moment, the chest of the heavenly dreams was silent, and we couldn't benefit from the divinity of it any longer. A mysterious mechanism. It doesn't look like anything I know. It looks like a motorbike helmet with some mysterious extra. There's a small round compartment here. 
I wonder what this hole is for. I wish my uncle was here. He knew how to deal with workers who sweat more than think. I don't think I'm doing the right thing. I think I can help you. With my wife? I don't recommend it, buddy. She'll bite your head off. <laughs> no, with the drive belt. I've got one right here. Really? Great. Let's see if it fits. You know, the nearest garage is 30 miles away. It looks like it fits. Excellent. It's working. Oh, what sweet music this tractor makes! Vroom, vroom. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I'll buy you a beer later. Vroom, vroom. I think the telephone is ringing in the hut. What? I can't hear you. The telephone is ringing. All right, I gotta go. Let's hope it's not my wife. little sweetheart. Hi, honey. Hmm, what? You have a little surprise for me? I've got a little surprise for you, too. <laughs> no, darling. You first. Come on. Come on. Tell me what my little pussycat did today. Here we go.
Here we go. If we try to insert this, maybe we'll manage to start the chest of dreams. Do you think so, stranger? See? This is the missing part. It fits perfectly. You're right. It seems to be made of the same material. No, it still doesn't work. Bother. Bother. Um, what the hell is wrong with this thing? I don't understand you, stranger. But don't give up. Listen to me. The traitor who assaulted me last night stole the sacred gem, which is necessary for the functioning of the chest of the heavenly dream. If you find the gem, the chest will start working again. Sure, I can't wait to do it. Okay, I'll leave. I'll be back with the gem. See you soon. Allah protect you. With that done, the tire will soon have a nice hole burned into it. This game has got me. See, you're smart. So, do you want to play? Sure. I'm unlucky in love, so... Let's start with five coins. Five is good. There we go. Bam, ba, ribbum. Bam, 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 bin. I move quickly, Tam. Your choice. Here it is. Wrong. How on earth did you manage to be that quick? You're slow, my friend! I lost. Well, I should never play those games. No, don't say that. Come on, try again. You'll be luckier. After a while, you'll understand the trick and you'll win. I can't lose more money. Come on, what kind of man are you? If you double the bet, I'll slow down. Is that okay? Let's do this crazy thing. Here we go. Bam, boo, ribbum. Bam, 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 bin. I move quickly. Turn. Your choice. Here it is. Wrong. One more time. Oh, no. I, I lost. Come on, what kind of man are you? Try it again. You'll see. Next time, you'll do better. I better go for a walk. Yes, take some fresh air and think about it. But I know you'll be back. I'm afraid I will. This game has got an irresistible something. See you soon, then. What's happening? I don't know. I think a tire exploded. Oh, no. You stay here. I'll go and replace it. And then I'll be right back. Luckily, I've got a jeep full of tires. Oh, used to, of course.
A wooden snuff box. I don't need it. Besides, I really feel like playing with the one-eyed man. Now I can use the Lividium Locator to find out which the right snuff box is. I could sell this trick to the one-eyed man, but then he'd probably call me a cheat. This game has got me. See, you're smart. So, do you want to play? Let's do this crazy thing. Here we go. Bam, rip em. Bam, 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 bin. I move quickly, Tom. Your choice. Here we go. This time, I'm definitely going to win. Lost. Well, you deserve a prize. I'll double it. Okay. Bam, rip em. Bam, 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 bin. I move quickly. Turn. Where is it? Here it is. Nice box. How much do you owe me? Here, take 20. I pay my bet, but it was a coincidence. Again? I'll double it. Sure, I like it. I like it. Bam, rip em. Bam, 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 bin. I move quickly. Turn. Choose. Here it is. I won! I think I have a natural gift for this game. More? Eighty! I'll double it! Damn it! Bam, rip em. Bam, 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 bin! I move quickly! Turn! So? It's mine! I'll double it! What the hell is happening? Bam, rip em. Bam, 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 bin! You turn! Easy! Pay up! Actually... What is it? I don't have that much money. Listen, my friend, I won. How do you want to pay? Cash or American Express? You're smart! I've just got good eyes. Well, I don't have any money left. You owe me at least 320 coins. I'll bet that even if you don't have any money left, you do have something precious inside there. Don't you? No! I don't bet with you on anything else. Go away! Here, take this. It's a jewel. It's worth a lot more than a miserable 320 coins. But don't make me play anymore. Go away!
It was a worthwhile trip, old man. Do you mean that you found the sacred gem? Yes, here it is. You can be happy now. Oh, thanks be to Allah. He will always protect you for the saintly action. Joy is back in these mountains. You have to use the sacred gem that you brought back to me. Put it there, in the cavity. Sure, here we go. It works! Allah has willed it. Name, Biz R. Code, 2882. Task, Physics Mechanic. Belonging to, Immaterial Family. Coming from, Atlantis, Black Shark Zone. Mission failed. I'll admit it right away, because it's the first time. And I also lost the bet with Fanta Pot, so I'll have to buy him a drink, if I come back. But I will, I promise. There's a wonderful girl waiting for me. And with her temper, if it takes too long, she'll make me suffer. It's really bad here. Sand dunes and horrible animals. There's little water. I really miss my home. I found the required amount of minerals and I stored them. But there's a little problem. My ship is out of order. I hope that somebody's listening to me because I feel stupid talking to myself. And if I'm not able to figure it out, then it must be a serious problem. I'd like to know if the technicians put orange juice in the engine or something, since everything is shut down, silent, dead. I've been working on the ship for days. I've been trying to get in contact with the base. What are they doing? Are they sleeping? Did they go on holiday? Nothing. I'm starting to feel weak because the climate here is terribly dry and I'm very dehydrated. When I return, I'll be in bad shape. I'll have to retire early, if I return, but I will. I've promised myself. Who knows if Lavit, my wife, remembered to water the plants in our garden. They're very nice plants. It would be such a pity if they die. I'm not able to get in contact with the base. Blast it! What's happening? I feel terribly lonely. I feel bad completely took apart the spaceship and put it together again six times. Nothing. It doesn't work. There's no contact. I'm getting calluses on my hands. I need to keep myself busy. I need to do something. I must remember. No signs from the base. Lavit, my dear. I know there's no contact, but I need to believe that you can hear me and you're still alive. I did something you really like with the pieces of the spaceship. I built a message reader. Here on the surface, it could be impossible to find one, while there could be some of our people with their medallions. If somebody ever finds me, or finds what remains of me and the others, it would be possible to hear our words. The only thing still keeping me alive is the message reader. I don't want the memory of Atlantis to be lost. I'm afraid that something happened down there. I'm afraid the day of judgment predicted by St. Crot has arrived. Maybe I'm hysterical, but I'm afraid this is the end of Atlantis. And as you taught me, it's necessary to preserve the memory of things after their end. I'm talking to whoever will listen to this after I'm dead. This mechanism makes it possible to read the medallion of the people from Atlantis. In every medallion, the people from Atlantis telepathically record information and facts. All you have to do is insert the medallion in the slot with the letter Z and push the red button. At this moment, the medallion of Biz R is inserted. Don't forget about me. I existed. Atlantis existed. There's a small round compartment here. Blast! 
I can't take it up. Hi Aunt Judith, here I am again. Is my picture ready? Almost finished. There, all done. Do you like it? Excellent. It really looks great. Old Aunt Judith will never stop surprising you. How about your signature? Ooh, I almost forgot. There we go, a beautiful X. I think I got something very interesting for you. A bottle of gin? I'm really interested in gin bottles. I collect them, you know. Nope. This is a lot better than some gin. It's a map. Map? Did you say map? Come on, let's see what kind of map. But this is a map of Easter Island. And this is nothing less than the signature of the old man Cushion. Quick, let's go. What are you doing? Let's not waste time. The moment has arrived. I'll grab a shovel and a pick. Let's go find ourselves some treasure. Yes, today's the day. My horoscope said so. I feel it, I feel it. Well, the place indicated is, yes, right by those disgusting big heads.
This guy is worse than I am. What a collection of junk. Hmm, dusty. What a feeling of deja vu. These remind me of the drawings I saw in the church. These heads are everywhere on this island. I wonder why the mouth is open and why there is a small hole inside it. I can't get anything done here. Incredible! Another secret passage. It's really impressive. I need to use my head. No, that would hurt. I need something else. I promised souvenirs to everybody, but now that I think about it, I was forgetting my dog. It's better not to touch them. You never know with the dead. These heads are everywhere on this island. I wonder why the mouth is open and why there is a small hole inside it.
It looks like a geographic map. Only here they use strange coordinates to point out the latitude and longitude. There are letters and numbers. Hi, Tobias. You're still busy getting in trouble. When I eventually find this trouble, I'll be set up for the rest of my life. What do you mean? Don't you believe that this map... Here it is. Here it is. I've been waiting for this moment all my life. And now, here it is. Look. Let's open the chest. Come on. Don't stare at me like that. Help me. I can't believe it. Did you follow the map? Sure. How do you think I had the idea of digging over here? Wonderful! What do you think you're gonna do now? I'll open up a casino in Las Vegas. I've been dreaming about that all my life, and now it's mine! I'll call it the Pirate of the Year 2000. How do you like it? Wonderful idea. Well, good luck. To you too, my friend. You brought me luck. If you're in Las Vegas, come to see me. I'll treat you like a king. Why not? Goodbye. Goodbye, and good luck. Who the hell built that crappy ship? Who was the fool who gave permission to take off? Fools, fools! I'd like to know who did it. I'll have him fired. I'll have him decapitated in the square. Blast him. Those damn technicians did everything wrong in their lives. They should have taken care of seaweed, I tell you. They could have come to look for me at least. Since they let me crash into the sea with my ship, I have the right to be brought back home with all the indemnities and mission citations. When I return, I'll kill them. I can't believe they're ignoring me after what happened. The ship went down and withered the possibility of returning home. I hope they received the message I sent while I was crash landing. I was flying at coordinate Q-3009, when with no reasons the ship stopped working, and we had a nice swim, me and the wreck, in the warm water of this area. As you know, in warm water, sharks live happily, but old Skew has hard skin, and I managed to reach an island. The locals gave me food, and they welcomed me like a goddess, with dances, songs, and banquets. Great! Now I'd like to return home. Let's hope that people from the base will come quick. I was forgetting an important thing. When the ship malfunctioned, I was telepathically talking with Paul Rowe, who was on a biological mission at coordinates V-V403. I hope that at least he will decide to come look for me. He's my uncle. Maybe he'll feel compassion. When I was a kid, 
He used to bounce me on his knee. If I wait for the people from the base, I'll grow old. My skin has become dark. I think it's from the sun exposure. You should see me. When I landed, I, I didn't have practically anything on me. I was holding my medallion, and the rest was taken away by the sea. Here, there is an incredible peace. I'm learning the local language. Sooner or later, somebody will come look for me, right? Here, I'm a celebrity. Here, I'm surely appreciated. The inhabitants are very good and naive. They think I'm some kind of goddess because they saw me falling from the sky, and so they do everything I ask. So, since everybody at the base is a little bit stupid, I'll have the locals build some statues like the ones we have. This way, if they come around here, they can immediately find me. The statues turned out pretty nice. Maybe the noses are too big. One reminds me of the chief. Hey guys, come quick, really? Who knows? The other day I had a look around. There are a lot of statues. It's impossible not to see them. Sometimes I find myself thinking in their language. Their chief told me that his people will keep building statues generation after generation until gods come to the island as I did. Everybody is really nice to me. It's strange. I can't remember some of the faces of my friends and colleagues anymore. But I sure remember my house. That blue couch in front of the window. Oh, especially that. Remember well. It's been a long time since I recorded my last message. I almost forgot about the medallion. Now everybody here wears a similar one as a necklace. The coming of the nights and days is very beautiful here. I sit in front of the sea. Understand that you'll never come. Every once in a while I remember to record, but uh, I don't really feel like doing it. I won't have a baby. This race is not compatible with ours. It must be some genetic problem. I feel old. But it doesn't matter. Who knows what happened to all of you down there? What did the woman from Atlantis say? Her uncle was on a mission at coordinates V-V-403. Let me see. Here it corresponds to the point in the Yucatan. I guess it's time to visit the Yucatan jungle. Name? Phantom Pod. Code? 6666. Six, six, six. Task? Astronomen Magnetist. Belonging to Cerebro family. Coming from Atlantis Green Seaweed Zone. At coordinates SK33, 
I found the most powerful astromagnetic field on the surface of the Earth. I think there's a problem communicating with the base. Anyway, I communicated that right now, I am in the heart of the field. Thanks to the experiments I did, I managed to build a simple, but let me say fantastic geometrical arrangements of rocks able to recharge a Levidium finder. The rapidity for the process that I obtained has never been reached before in the history of science in Atlantis. I'm studying the details to further improve this technique. I deserve the government prize for science. It would be nice if the base would acknowledge receipt of my messages instead of ignoring me. I finished my mission. This is the best procedure to recharge a Levidium finder. Step one. Insert the finder on the stone in the middle of the composition that I built with the ultrasounds. Step two. Put the ROM crystal cube on the finder. Step three. The ROM cube will vibrate colors. When red, the finder is fully charged. Take it out of the cube. If not, it will lose energy again. This procedure lasts only three Xylon and two Fragma. Please contact me. Dear colleagues, I have arrived at the conclusion that with this discovery it would be possible to improve enormously the finder's capacity. We'll have a massive quantity of Levidium, and with it, it'll be possible to at least double the production of flying vehicles. We are opening frontiers to our technical development that were impossible to imagine because of the difficulty in finding the rare Levidium. I'd like to hear somebody communicate with me, but I'm not receiving any messages from Atlantis. What are they doing? I'm still in total isolation. I don't even understand if they can receive my communications. I inform them that my ship is out of order. But I'm not a good mechanic, so I hope technical help will arrive very soon. The attempts to communicate with the base have been unsuccessful. In the meantime, dear colleagues, I further improved my discovery by reducing the recharging time to one Xylon and three Fragma. This place is very nice. Twenty-four days have passed since the last time I communicated with the base. Today I discovered moss, not yet classified, growing on the ship. I took a picture of it and classified it for the biology department. The planet's surface has enormous space and extraordinary natural richness. I'm classifying each new discovery. My discovery is the most important in the history of science. No sign from the base. Still no sign from the base. I'm alone on the surface. The changing seasons have made me lose perception of time. The automatic calendar is broken. I've let my beard grow. My discovery is the most important in the history of science in Atlantis. The sky is enormous. Atlantis disappeared. The day of the judgment has arrived. I remain alone on the surface. On the other side of the earth, there's certainly somebody like me trying to call the base, and like me waiting in silence. I won't ever return home. I survived the disaster. I classified an enormous amount of information about the surface, but the atmospheric elements are ruining my instruments and the electronic records. My discovery is the most important in the history of science in Atlantis. Here, in this area of the surface, the weather is excellent. I can survive until my natural death.
Is this a real rock or just another part of an enigma? I wonder why everything exotic must be so strange looking. This rock's positioning is perfect. I could get a real good tan lying here. There are seven long cylinders. Each has eight holes. Some of them are empty, some filled up. Hello, old man. Hello, stranger. What made you come to this place forgotten by the white man? The desire to learn. Who are you? I hope that your desire will be genuine. I'm the mystic of the tribe. I've been living in this hut for the last 70 years. I keep the powers and the knowledge of my people. Do you want to tell me the ancient legends of your ancestors? Stranger, our history and its mysteries would need 70 times more than the years I spent here to be told. And you white men are always in a hurry. But I... You always must have a very clear idea of where you are going if you don't want to get lost on your way. Come back with a precise question. The sun is going down. I have to pray to the sun god so that the sun will rise again tomorrow. Okay, first the dog, then the termites, and the bats. Now the snake. Where's the crocodile? Old man, listen to me. I saw a pyramid which I believe to be very ancient. Tell me how to enter it. Did you manage to see the sacred home of the celestial god? Did the gods let you? No stranger has ever managed to get close without dying after being swept away by mysterious incidents. Who are you? What do you want from our people? I'm a journalist, and I have to find out how to enter the pyramid. Many signs from all around the world have brought me here. The Maya legends tell about a stranger who would come one day at the end of time and who would have opened the doors of the pyramid to light the truth about our origins. Maybe that day has arrived. Can you help me? Only if you swear never to reveal the existence of the sacred pyramid. I swear. And only if you'll show true courage and intelligence. I'll do my best. The only open door of the pyramid brought me to a strange idol with the head of a snake. What does it mean? He's the god Quetzalcoatl, the snake god. It's the statue guardian of an ancient mystery. Tell me more. It's not possible. You promised to help me, and your legends tell you to do it. Do you swear never to talk to anybody about what you'll see? I swear. On your blood, 
and on the blood of your descendants. I wish the blood of my descendants will turn to fire if I talk. Repeat it. I swear on the blood and the blood of my descendants. I wish the blood of my descendants will turn to fire if I talk. Now help me. It's written. To enter the pyramid, you must find some objects full of magic energies. Like what? The first object is a fetish, or as you foreigners say, a charm for the gods. Bring me the bone of an animal cursed by men. The second object is the symbol of life. Bring me the egg of the Atnamactasper. What? It's a bird that lives for a hundred years. There are only two born each century. They live in our forests, a male and a female. From this couple will be born another couple, the only one in the world, which will give birth, and so on, until the end of all times. So, nothing really difficult. What are the other strange things I need to bring you? Careful, stranger. Don't laugh about those things. The gods could be offended and punish you. I think they already don't like me. Besides that, there's nothing to laugh about. Well, keep going. The third object is light, the yellow flower of the sun. The fourth object is movement, the snake from which the god Quetzalcoatl takes his appearance. Good luck. Thanks. I'll need it. recall seeing a strange bird fly from that nest. Let's hope I don't drop it. It looks very fragile. This looks like a thigh bone. Hi, I've come to visit you. How's it going? Poor me, poor me. What's happening now? I've taken your advice and I've opened up a fruit and vegetable shop. Well, it seems like a good idea. What are you complaining about? The locust invasion. They've devoured everything. Damn insects! I'm ruined! Poor me! Poor me! It's a curse! Why don't you try to open up a pesticide shop? Poor me! Poor me! Leave me alone with my sorrow! Good luck! Poor me! Poor me! I'll ask the shopkeeper. Well, if you want to help me, sell me that bone. I'll pay you well, and you'll be able to start your business again. Poor me. Poor me. Come on, don't start that again. Nobody loves me. I'm ruined. Poor me. Poor me. Well, I'll take it myself. Poor me. Poor me. Now they take the few remains. The jackals are attacking. Unlucky me. I told you I'll pay for it. Here, take this money. Poor me, poor me. They're already giving me alms. I'm at the point of begging. Goodbye. Poor me, poor me. Everybody left me in my moment of need. Poor me, poor me.
Here's the yellow flower. The flower of the sun. Let's hope it is a good omen for what we are doing. I'd love to know what we are doing. When it's time. Can you repeat that thing about the magic object? The first, the second object is the symbol of life, the egg of the Atomactus bird. The third object is light, the yellow flower of the sun. The fourth object is movement, the snake from which the god Quetzalcoatl takes his appearance. And here's the egg. Give it to me. Here. You've broken it. The species, what do you call them? It's not ecological. Worry not. The Atomactus will regenerate from my body when I'm dead. Well, this one is done too. Wasn't easy, but here you go. You got the bow asleep too, so you can do what you want with it, with no danger. Very well, stranger. This is the thigh bone of a dromedary. Should be okay as a fetish. Are you sure that the animal was cursed when he was alive? I was there. I guarantee that they wished him so many misfortunes that he died immediately. Give it to me. Why? It's not time for questions now. Be silent and look. You have carved it. It's a pipe. What are we going to do with the pipe? I told you to be silent. When it's time, you'll know. Oh, uh, well, now what are you making? An omelet? Could you cut out those stupid jokes? The gods are looking down on us severely. I just wanted to play it down a little bit. I'm very serious. You are an unbeliever and a very curious man. Be patient a little bit longer and you'll know. What are you doing with that monster? Look and wait patiently. Forgive me, sacred snake, if I torture you like this, but it's the god you represent who orders me to. Let's hope he won't wake up. Rolled up like this, he could get mad. How did it move? Up, up, right, up, up, down, up.
I see a guy throwing objects into the water. One of those looks like a medallion. I'm shivering. There are still blood stains. A hole in the columns. There's some kind of mechanism behind this. During my exploration of the pyramid, I found a strange image. It looks like a solar calendar, and on its side, I saw a few holes carved in the columns. Can you tell me what they're for? I do know, but I can't reveal this secret to you. I told you that you have to show yourself to be astute and brave. Just a little help? Only one man will have to solve the enigma. Old man, can you tell me the meaning of that funny drawing close to the solar calendar? It's a portrait of a midget Indian throwing objects into a puddle of water. It's an ancient sacred custom, and that is not a midget, but a man of God. Uh, okay. What is he doing? Is he playing or what? And where is that place? You don't deserve to know. Come on, do you want to help me or not? I've come from the other side of the world to this godforsaken place where you can't even find a hot dog. Full of horrible animals. I don't even know who's won the football league. And when I'm close to the solution, you tell me I don't deserve to know? White man, you don't deserve to see the truth. But why? You don't respect our beliefs. Did something I say offend you? You, as everyone of your race, laugh about ancient traditions and destroy our culture. Get out of here. Wait, you felt offended because I said that the midget in the drawing was playing? I'm sorry. I don't believe you. Sacrilege. Wait, I didn't mean... Let's talk about it. Maybe I used two colorful expressions. You defiled our people. Go away or I'll incite nature's fury against you. Please, give me one more chance. It's a bad habit of ours to underestimate everything. But it wasn't in bad faith. I promise you, from now on, I won't joke around. Hmm. Well, come on. Let's be friends. I'm the man that your legend described. You've got to help me. Tell me where I can find that puddle of water. The... Puddle is a small sacred lake. The man in the drawing is a holy man, an ancestor of mine, who used to throw divine fetishes into those very deep waters as benevolent gifts to the gods. How can I get there? Follow this path. Thank you. I'm going now. Wait. What? The desire of this old man in front of you has always been to be able to get the sacred objects from the lake. We can do it together. It will be my way to thank you for your help. It's not possible. Why? Oh, and you'll see. I don't believe it! And now he looks aggressive too. He could eat me. I got some good news about your dear little brother, my friend. A slippery worm is dead? Uh, actually, Tobias found the treasure. He found it? Damn him! And now he's having fun behind my back! Where is he? I absolutely must find him and claim my share!
Well, he was saying he wanted to go to Las Vegas to make his dreams come true. The casino! That's an idea he had since he was a kid. Now he's done it! But he won't get away with it. I'm leaving! Have a nice trip, my friend. Goodbye! I'm wasting time. I'm only wasting my time here. An ancient sculpture. Two strange symbols under each face. An ancient sculpture. Two strange symbols under each face. An ancient sculpture. Two strange symbols under each face. I've got a nice surprise for you, old man. We of the divine religion do not participate in a birthday ritual. No, no. Your dream has come true. The crocodile is no longer a problem. You are a saint. You are the man of the prophecy. What a man. Okay, okay, that, that's enough. Go see for yourself. I will. I will. The beast has gone. Gone!
What's happening? This carved face is green. This is a big tombstone. Looks more like it might lead to another chamber below. I could get a hernia doing that. Better forget it before I need medical attention. Old man, I saw some strange things in the pyramid. Did you manage to enter it? Yes, but it was not easy. Incredible. You are the chosen one. What's the use of those five stained glasses inside the pyramid? Stained glasses? I see you haven't discarded your habit. Those are the little celestial fires. What are they for? Even if you've been good enough to enter the pyramid, I can't reveal this secret. Oh, great. I guess I'll just have to figure it out for myself, then. So, how was the swim? Wonderful! The future generations will remember my name forever. The past generations wrote this in the ancient legends. Did you find what you were looking for? What my people have been waiting so long for. Look! A beer can? No, this has nothing to do with that. How did this get here? Look! Our treasure, the fetishes of our origins. Those are the little statues of the things you made me look for. The snake, the yellow flower, the egg of that bird. Uh, what's his face? Its name is Atnamactes. Atnamactes, don't you understand? It's not difficult. Look, there's the thigh bone of the cursed animal, too. And what's this? It looks like a medallion. I don't understand. Give it to me. Never. It's mine. It belongs with the sacred objects. No, it's not part of them. It's like the can before. Hmm, I don't know. Come on. Without me, you wouldn't have managed to get the treasures. Well, you're right. And it looks like a piece of junk anyway. Name, whole row. Code, 9191. Task, biologist philosopher. Belonging to mental family. Coming from Atlantis, burned land zone. I called the base. What are they doing down there? I have technical damage to my ship, and I ask for help. This system of sending only one man on a mission is strange. They make us out to be supermen. Stupid! 
as a scientist, do I have to prove something? Prove that I can go without anything? I collected the requested plant samples. I informed the base, but they don't answer me. You have to demonstrate to produce something, to be efficient. If not, you can even die. But they don't answer. Where is this so-called efficiency? I would like to know. I'm on the surface for several days with damage to the ship, and nobody worries about coming to get me. I wonder if they're doing it on purpose. Blast them! I'm a disruptive element, right? Have they decided to get rid of me? Sure. Actually, I'm an average biologist. Besides that, I talk too much. They want to leave me here. I'm old. Soon I'll be unproductive. I'll be a social burden. All right. Did they decide to get rid of old whole row? And I've decided to get rid of them. I will never obey an order from the central power. Death's just a passage away. And I accept it. But I want to leave a memory of myself. The plants I've found permit the conservation of the human body for years after death. This research of mine has been always considered to be of no use. The law in Atlantis provides for the cremation and the dispersion of the ashes in the sea. There's not enough room for the bodies. I've been eating those plants for several days. I'm building a mausoleum for myself, for my body. Alive I was nobody, just a bad-looking face, a code. Dead, I'll have meaning. I've always been bad-looking. Women never looked at me. Because I'm bad-looking, they thought I was a loser. Because I was smart, they were disturbed. Now, my body remains a, a sign of what I was, but I'll have it forever. The tomb is finished. I'm inside. I created a very complicated system to open it. It's necessary to use the Levidium Finder fully recharged, but the real challenge is the Enigma of the Rom Crystals. Only those being as smart as I am will succeed in solving it. It's a challenge for the future. Whoever solves the Enigma to enter my tomb won't find any treasure, but just the dead body of an unhappy man. The pleasure in solving it consists in the demonstration of intelligence. They say I'm crazy. This is the Enigma. The five ROM crystals are mounted in five heads of different colors carved in a wall in the top of the pyramid. Touching the ROM crystals, they change color thanks to their magnetic characteristics. The goal is to obtain the right combination of colors between the heads and the crystals. Only by doing this does the passage leading to my tomb open. Here are the six conditions to be respected to solve this enigma. There can't be two crystals of the same color exposed. Besides the yellow head, where the yellow crystal must appear, on no other head can a crystal of the same color appear. The combination of colors obtained with one head and its crystal must appear only once, so the same color combinations can't be repeated. The blue crystal cannot be on the red head. The red crystal cannot be on the black head. The black crystal cannot be on the red head. I ate the last plant necessary for the conservation of my body. Now it's my turn. The sweetest death is sleeping. A sweet sleep. I wonder if somebody will manage to solve the enigma of the ROM crystals. Actually, it's so easy. On the yellow head, the yellow crystal. On the blue head, the... Uh...
Blast it! Blast it! What's happening? The contact has been broken. Something strange and miraculous is happening. What do you mean? Look here. The mechanism suddenly stopped working. White, cold rain is falling from the sky. Clouds have covered the sun. What? It's not possible. It's snowing. In the middle of Algeria? Is this what you call snow? Yes. Has it ever happened here before? Never, as far as I can remember. And this is the reason why the mechanism is not working. What? It's the sunlight which permits the mechanism to work. Do you mean that it won't work until the sun comes back? Yes, and this mysterious wonder seems to be a divine sign. Looks like the usual bad luck to me. Could it be a simile of the crystal balls in fortune telling?
I really think that now that It's a strange octagonal object made of metal with crystal on its side. I've never seen anything like it. I'm starting to think I'm not suitable for this job, but hey, I've come this far and I'm no quit. I just need to think straight and get a move on. I'm starting to, but hey, I've, I just need to think straight. It's a strange octagonal object made of metal with crystal on its side. I've never seen anything like it. Hey, here's the engraved symbol I first saw in the tomb I visited. My friend, how did it go in Las Vegas? Did you find a little brother? <laughs> hot, hot. I'm sorry, what? Hot, hotter. <laughs> uh, so you don't want to tell me how it went? <laughs> really hot, hot, fire. Was there something really funny, or, or have you lost your mind? I did it! I did it! What? My little brother was there. Nice. Fat, without a wrinkle. Hot. Hotter! Well, sure. Las Vegas must have put him in good hands. He was spending loads of money. The luxury cars, the showgirls. And I was thinking, hot, hot. It's getting hotter. I don't follow you. <laughs> and then I went to Uncle Paul at the gas station. And I told him, give me all the gas you got in that pump, Paul. It's for a good cause. Good cause? <laughs> it's getting hotter. I went around the casino three times that night. And like Tom Thumb, I was leaving a little trail behind me. A nice, colorful trail. Hot, hot. <laughs> what the hell did you do? And then, suddenly, 
nice big fireworks, a nice boom, and then once again, boom, tara, boom, all the casino, boom. Oh, I don't believe it. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> And the little brother's not there anymore. And the casino's not there anymore. And the luxury girls, the show cars, or was it the other way around, are not there anymore. Hot, hot, I found my big brother. <laughs> you set the casino on fire? Hot, hot. Let that be a lesson, Tobias, bad boy. As kids, he always burned my little model cars. And the figures, and the little balls. He used to burn everything. That's a nice lesson. <laughs> Old man, I need you to take me down there again. <laughs> I don't go anywhere. He's lost his mind. Listen, it's important to me. I said no. I don't talk. I don't see. I don't hear. Is there somebody? Peekaboo! Peekaboo! Everything's not going to be ruined because of this fruit loop. What can I do? Ah, I know. Tra la la, tra la la. Listen, my friend, I know for sure that out there is more of Mancusin's treasure. The treasure your brother found was only a very small part. Come on, let's go there. Get the treasure and then you'll have fun behind Tobias's back. There's more? More treasure? You serious? Sure, on my word as a journalist. Come on, let's go. Yes, revenge will be sweet. Hot, hot. It's getting hotter. Tra -la -la. In this adventure, Atlanteans drop like flies. How exciting! Listen to what it says. 
only a few words separate me from death, but I want somebody to know the fate of a people determined by its own technology. I feel my life being devoured by the sickness. Maybe a virus coming from the bowels of the earth that we abused. The cause was the ravenous search for energy which led us to build the geothermal pump. Using the energy and mind power alone, we were able to construct great crafts. Crafts able to travel to and from the surface city of Atlantis. Then the sickness came, and the powers we used to keep the city afloat failed. The great city of Atlantis sank beneath the waves. It's difficult to read it, but here it continues. Horrified and helpless, I witnessed the destruction of a great civilization. I fear that those on missions on the surface sectors are lost. Their crafts would be dead. Immobile. The writing is illegible for a while, but the journal ends with this. I was naive when I thought that I would be safe hiding in this place. Far away from my companions, the last of the Atlantis people, but it was not to be. Now, he must have died before finishing his last message. It doesn't continue. Hey, I can read this. It must be an effect of the Atlantis helmet. This elevator still seems to be working. It's useless. The pipes are too high. I can't reach them. What a disappointment. The drawers are empty. A good journalist like me can't avoid being curious. And a filing cabinet. It's useless trying to reach that air duct. It's too high. It's useless trying to reach that air duct. It's too high. I can't move it. It's locked. Hey, there's a woman in there. Blast! I can't move it. It's locked. Blast! I can't... Hey! There's a woman in there! It looks like a control panel. Somebody broke it. Still there? I told you, you can't enter, swine! Is there somebody in there? Yes, it's Little Red Riding Hood, but she won't open for you or anyone. Try to force the door if you want, but it'll do no good. I'm Richard Kendall, madam. I'm a journalist for the Circle and the Stone. Open it for me. Oh, yeah, right. A journalist. You're an ignorant animal, not a journalist, and I won't open it for you! No, there's a misunderstanding. Believe me. Open this door so you can see me. I don't know you. You know me very well, animal, and I feel sick every time I see you. Madam, 
I went all over the world to get here. Open the door. I've got to talk to you. I came to find you and the professor and take you home. That's what you call talk? I said no, and I mean no. You're making a mistake. You're making a mistake if you think that I'll believe this stupid trick, Simon. You won't put your dirty hands on me anymore. I'd rather die inside here than open the door to you. That's it. Finished. End of the line. Listen, madam, I threw my press pass into the room. Look at it. You'll see I'm really a journalist for the circle and the stone. Still trying that pathetic attempt? I told you to get out of here. Please, read the card. What do you have to lose? No, it's probably some crude message. I swear, I'm Richard Kendall. Let's see. So? Actually, the pass seems okay. Open the door. You could have stolen it. Test me. Hmm. Let me see. Ah! The professor told me this about the editor once. What's the editor's nickname? Oh, oh I know it. I know it. Uh, I came up with that nickname. Uh, oh, if he finds out, he'll fire me. We call him the slave driver. Just as Professor Caldwell used to say. That slave driver will send people to do anything. So? I guess you're here to help. Thank heavens. You must be Helen. Well, tell me what happened. What are you doing inside here? It's all like a bad dream. I guess you know who came with me on this trip. The professor and the oddball billionaire. A science patron. Well, that's what I've been told. And his bodyguard tried to assault me in this underwater tomb. So I ran away and I hid inside here. Where's everybody now? It's a mess. First of all, I've got to tell you, the blower is not the philanthropist he makes out, but a mafia boss who smelled the money that he could get from Atlantis. Well, how did you find out? He ended up admitting it. It didn't matter because he was holding all the cards at the time. Well, how did the professor react? He was furious, and they locked him in another room. In the beginning, I tried to pretend that I was on Blower's side, hoping to have their trust and manage to free the professor. But when that animal Simon put his hands on me, I just lost control. Poor professor. Also, he doesn't have any insulin, and I'm afraid he might slip into a diabetic coma. Heavens. Listen, Kendall. Go take him his insulin. I have his medicine. Here. This is the syringe with the insulin. If he shows any signs of abdominal pain, then use it immediately. This elevator still seems to be working. I guess whatever is behind it is important enough to have a special lock. There's probably something special on the other side of this door. That's why it's locked. All these doors are beginning to look the same. Three colored dolphins on three different doors. Three colored dolphins on... One with the green cover is empty, as are the others.
Professor Caldwell, I assume? My dear boy, I've already heard that line. I'm really delighted to see you. Do you remember me? Of course I do, Kendall, dear boy. How do you feel? I've had better moments. My blood sugar is low and my stomach is beginning to hurt. I'm a diabetic, you see. I met Helen and she gave me this insulin. Quick, dear boy, give me the injection. Do you feel any better now? Yes, yes, the pain is subsiding. Thank you, Kendall. Well, how can we get out of here? When exploring, I noticed a strange mechanism. I think that could be the answer to our problems. Well, do you know how to use it? There are some drawings in another part of Atlantis with the instructions. In my pockets, there is the key to the filing cabinet where they are. Take it. I managed to hide it from Blower. Where are those two now? In the control room. Avoid them. They would shoot you on sight. Incredible! I understood how this thing works. We will become billionaires. We'll be the owners of the world. Yeah, boss, yeah! What a wonderful idea! Uh, what do we destroy next? How about uh, Antarctica? I never could stand those penguins. They make me feel uncomfortable. Shall we destroy them in a heat wave? Or with a tidal wave? What do you think, huh? What do you think? Uh, I like tidal waves. They're cool. Patience, Simon. We must operate with a strategy. Let's try to cause a hurricane in Argentina. Okay? I move this button. I push the button with the symbol, engage! Did you manage it, boys? I don't know. The problem is, we won't know from down here when the world realizes that it's not just a coincidence that something serious is happening. Everybody will freak out all over the world. <laughs> They'll think it's the end of the world. Instead, it will be the beginning of a new era. The era of Blower, the new controller of the world! Yeah, boss, yes! What a wonderful idea! Hey, but let's play with this thing some more. Uh, what do you think about a tornado in Iraq, huh? What do you think, boss? We should warn them before to show that all those disasters are caused by an intelligent and mysterious mind. Uh, mysterious, yeah, but they'll never find us down here, huh? <laughs> We need to communicate to the world that we'll destroy Iraq with a meteorological catastrophe. And then, do it! Yeah, boss, yeah. A hurricane would do nicely. Can I push a button? Can I, boss? Huh? Can I? Patience, Simon. When they understand that there's somebody responsible for these catastrophes, we will present our requests, and shortly, all the countries in the world will have to surrender, and I will be able to control the whole world. Yeah, boss, yeah, what a wonderful idea. Can I start a flood in South Africa? Boss, can I push the button now? <laughs> can I? Wait, Simon. First of all, we need to find out how to leave the tower. Closed inside here, we won't be able to do a lot. We need to convince the professor to cooperate. He's a clever scientist, and he can help us a lot in this enterprise. I'll convince him, boss. I'll do it. I it won't hurt him too much, I, I promise. <laughs> Okay, I found the professor. He was really exhausted. I gave him the injection, like you said. Oh my goodness, thank heavens for that. We must get out of here. Go and release him, and then get back here. I'll try. 
You must succeed or the world is in severe danger. Four files with some instructions. On three of them, there are colored dolphins. Wow, I can read it. It must be an effect of that Atlantis helmet. These are the instructions for operating the mechanism which keeps the three doors locked. Everything is based on plasma. Well, let's see. Hmm, good. Now I understand how to use the buttons. On this one, there's a red dolphin. It says red equals zero, green equals two, blue equals two. On this one, there's a green dolphin. It says red equals zero, green equals one, blue equals one. On this one, there's a blue dolphin. It says red equals zero, green equals three, blue equals three. This divider can be opened using this lever. I'm wasting my wishing for escape. I need to get a move on. If I don't close the divider of the decompression room, this lever doesn't move. If I don't manage to close the decompression chamber, I won't need them.
If I don't close the divider of the decompression room, this lever doesn't move. Wait a second. Forget sunken cities. This is much more important. I wonder if they managed to invent beer as well. It reminds me of my fridge at home. Always empty, just when you're hungry.
look, the instructions for that strange mechanism. It says here that the pipe with the rubber valve is used for liquid chlorine. Must be some kind of cleaning mechanism. Another file cabinet. Forget it, it's locked, and there is a key broken off in the lock. I'm wasting time. Looking at this... I'm wasting time. Wasting time. Those Atlantis people were sure smart. This must be part of the elaborate geothermal pump. It's a little rubber valve, similar in design to those found in intravenous equipment. There's a white powder inside here. I'd say it's lime. Look, I found some chlorine. We must be able to use this somehow. Not on its own, my friend. Keep looking and see if you can find anything else. Professor, I found some distilled water. I hope it will be useful. Hmm. Not enough to drown them, but it's a start. Well, the interesting thing is, the place where I found it. What do you mean? Well, there's a kind of decompression room with some diving suits in. They are maybe a little bit old, but it's worth trying. Right. Better than dying down here. But with only water, we can't do much. I'll look for something else. Good. Hurry up. Here's some lime I found. What do you think? Still not enough, but I think we're on to something. Keep looking and see if you can find anything else. This smells like alcohol. Does anything come to mind? Here we go now, more or less. What do you mean? We can knock them out with chloroform. Well, I don't know how to prepare that. I know how. First you must put water, the lime, and the chlorine in a beaker. Boil everything. Then you put the salts of lime chloride you obtained in the alcohol, and you'll have chloroform. Excellent. I'm going immediately to play the young chemist. Come on, Kendall, get moving.
I think it's better to use the valve. Now I've obtained the solution of lime chloride. Old junk, no use to me, unless I really do want to become a junk dealer. It's empty, or you could say it was full of nothing. I won't get anything done this way. I won't get anything done this way. I won't get anything done this way. It's not the time to play with the tap. This is nothing but the beaker's valve. If I use this then, the liquid inside the beaker drains out through this tube. Now I've obtained the solution of lime chloride. I'm wasting time. Here we go. It should be enough. And now let's shake it, baby. With all this chloroform, I could put an elephant to sleep. I did it, Professor! Here's the chloroform! Good job, Kendall! All we have to do now is to find a way to use it against those two evil men. I'm not sure if the mechanism really works. We should experiment. Aha! I point out some place nearby, and I try to push the button for the underwater storm. If we feel some effect, it means that we really have the world in our hands. Yeah, boss, yeah. I feel strange. Maybe it's the humidity of this place, but I feel really tired. Hey, boss, boss. What's happening? You're falling asleep. Uh, now that I, I think about it, I, I could uh, take a nap. Then afterwards, we push the bar.
They are sleeping like babies. And here's the key. Well done. Here we go. Now, I'll go look for Helen. What are you gonna do then? What should I do now? We'll go to the decompression room. Kendall, you destroy the control mechanism. Nobody must use it again. The people of Atlantis were responsible people. We only create trouble. The mechanism is dangerous in our hands. I agree. I'll see you down in the decompression room later. Inside is full of strange mechanisms. What kind of evil is this? The inside is full of strange mechanisms. What kind of evil is this? That's him, Professor. Our rescuer. Cute looking, isn't he? My dear boy, you've been fantastic. But now, we have to get out of this hole. Well, there are some diving suits here which seem to be adequate for our needs. If they're still in good shape. If not, we'll have to hold our breath for a long time. Are you any good at swimming underwater? When I was young, I wasn't bad at all. Are you kidding? Don't you know we are 450 meters below? The pressure would make our lungs implode. 456 meters and 70 centimeters to be precise. Do you think we're all stupid here? Obviously, we can't return by swimming, but I think those diving suits are still in perfect working order. We'll just have to try. Anyway, it's better to die underwater than in the hands of those two thugs. There's only one problem. Only one? The doors of the decompression room are connected. What do you mean? Well, look over there. To open the outside door of the decompression room, you have to push the button inside the room itself. Good, so let's go inside the room and push it. It isn't that easy, Richard. The outside door doesn't open if the inside one isn't closed. But this means we're locked down here. I don't want to die like a trapped rat! Helen, this is not the time for hysterics! I think it's the perfect time! I don't want to die like a doomed rat! Slap her, Richard! A slap to a woman? I can't! I don't want to die like a trapped rat! No! <laughs> no! All right, I'll do it! Stop! Are you stupid? I'm having a panic attack, and you're going to give me a slap? Just try it. I'll smash your face in. Helen, behave! Come on. Shall we stop all this petty bickering? This isn't the time to argue. Right. Let's think about this. 
It seems the only solution is to operate on this lever of the control desk, which closes the inside door of the decompression room. Well, that means that we need to control the lever which closes the door from far away. I don't understand how we could do that. It's impossible. Well, then shut up so the rest of us can think about the problem. Huh? It's obvious that somebody has to stay inside here and control the lever while the others get out. Why are you looking at me? Would you like me to stay here and die like a rat while you're breathing God's good air? Never. Why me? I'm a famous scientist. It's unimaginable that the world could do without me. I am a beautiful girl. The world needs beautiful girls. How about me? Am I an idiot? No, Richard. You are a brave man. A man from a difficult time. A hero. A man who risks his own life to save the world. Go. God will protect you. I don't want to seem to be an atheist, but can we draw straws? Come on, my dear boy. Don't tell me you're afraid. Who, me? Are you kidding? The thing is that I feel lonely down here. Oh, look at the big man. Do you miss your mummy, little one? Mm -hmm. Hey, you quit it. Come on, Richard. You're the strongest one. Besides, I don't see any other solution. Must be another way out of this somehow. Give me an hour, and I'll show you that I'm not only the strongest one, but the smartest too. I'll find a way to get out of here. All of us. <laughs> yeah, right. And if you don't manage it? Well, in that case, I'll let you out, and then somehow I'll come to. Good, Kendall. I like it. You have 59 minutes and 55 seconds left. Well, me and my big mouth. I'll see you soon. I've got to come up with a better idea. This is a strange thing to be doing. I'll just have to wait to see the results. This is a strange thing to be doing. I'll just have to wait to see the results.
Do you have any suggestions? Here's our hero. Do you want to let us out yet? Come on, I still have plenty of time. Come on, Kendall. One hour goes pretty quickly. I'm only wasting my time here. I'm wasting time here. Quick, let's go into the decompression room and put the diving suits on. You're a genius, Richard. Even I couldn't have done better. Maybe, but I think somebody helped him. Come on, let's go. It's so hot in here that the ice will melt pretty soon. Boss, boss, wake up! Oh, my head! What hit me? Hmm, who's there at this time in the morning? Morning! Come on, boss, wake up! Huh? What? Who's there? Oh, he fell asleep! Oh, my head! Uh, do you have a headache too, boss? My head's pounding! What's happening? We fell asleep, boss! I think somebody played a trick on us! Simon, look outside. Oh, I can't stand up. Damn them. They're leaving. But who's there with them? Quick, the mechanism. Destroy them. Destroy them. I still feel foggy. Here we go. I push this and I kill them. What's happening? I don't know, boss. What's that sound? Who knows? But the mechanism didn't work. They're escaping. Something's gone wrong here. I don't like it at all. Let me see what you pushed, animal. I pushed this little button, boss. Idiot. Look at the gyroscope. The mechanism was pointed towards us, towards Atlantis. Atlantis is going to explode. Get out, quick, quick. What's a gyroscope? Uh, gee, boss, uh, it's true. What are we going to do now? I'm leaving. You stay here. Uh, but why, boss? Don't leave me. I didn't mean to do it. A simple chimp. You stay here to be disintegrated, along with this damn place. Please! You destroyed everything! You put an end to my dream of power with your idiot hands! I'm so sorry, boss! Let's get out, quick! We're safe. We did it. Right. 
But what a pity about Atlantis. It's gone forever. And who knows what horrible end Blower and Simon had. I'm actually sorry for them. Come on, Professor. This stuff happens. How about me? Look at my hair. I haven't had a decent shower in weeks. Why don't you shut that stupid mouth and get a grip? How rude. I think you two are a perfect match. I'd rather go back down and stay there. No doubt about it. You match perfectly. Is this the happy ending they promised me? I protest. Oh! Did you see, boys? I was good to find this underground passage. Shut up, idiot! Chimp! You destroyed everything! Everything! Boss, please! I didn't mean to! Shut up and walk, idiot! Who knows if we'll ever manage to get out of this damned hole? I'm so sorry, boss. And quit calling me boss, idiot. Okay, okay, but don't you forgive me, boss? Oh, I give up.